Welcome to Matali Basin for the 60th Motocross of Nations, the Motocross des Nations, the world famous World Team Motocross Championship. We're just alongside Winchester, off the M3 to the east of Winchester, right alongside the A31. And there is 40,000 fans enjoying some glorious weather here on a beautiful late summer Sunday afternoon in Great Britain. Terrible weather earlier on, half past four in the morning through to about half past seven. Absolutely mind-boggling storms. A a apocalyptic storms struck the place but everybody survived what's more important the 1640 meter track designed by johnny douglas hamilton has survived we are back at the scene of the british motocross grand prix that saw stefan everts on the way to one of his 101 career grand prix wins earlier in the year but the people who qualified top are the united states of america james stewart and ryan villaporto both going one won in their respective races during their qualifying races yesterday Stewart beating Stefan Everts and Billy McKenzie Billy Mack on a 450 cc Yamaha riding for Great Britain in the MX1 class and finishing ahead of Josh Coppins, Tunnel Leoc and Max Nagel in the MX2 class Villa Porto got the better of a feasty duel with the newly crowned MX2 world champion and that was at number two Christoph Porcel there is the number two machine of Ryan Villaporto, the man who has just taken the the lights, as they call it, the MX2 AMA National Championship in the States for the Monster Energy Drink Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. Villaporto, as I said, took that MX2 race victory in qualifying yesterday ahead of Purcell, Antonio Cairoli, Ben Townley making his return to Europe for New Zealand, Tyler Rattray for South Africa, Kevin Strybos for Belgium, and uh, Tommy Searle for Great Britain ahead of Australian Brett Metcalf. What an absolutely illuminating cast of characters. I'm Jack Burnicle, and I'm as on the edge of my seat as you doubtless are at home to see what happens here. Incidentally, the open qualifying race went to Belgian Steve Ramon ahead of Ivan Tedesco, late replacement for Ricky Carmichael, who found that the shoulder he dislocated at Glen Helen a fortnight ago wasn't up to racing when he tried it out on Tuesday. So he's out, Tedesco's in, his teammate, of course, with the Makita Suzuki team in the USA. But the first race brings together the MX1 and MX2 guys. And the whole job will be so critical, especially for those 250Fs. But it's the supremely confident Stefan Everts riding an unlikely number seven for Belgium who emerges through the fast left turn in the lead in this beautiful English sunshine. Everts gets the gate that he wanted on the 450 Rinaldi Yamaha. So Everts takes the lead. Number four well in there is... J is uh, Chris Sebastian Porcel, but down already we've got number 14, Tommy Searle. Tommy Searle is down. Oh, and the new superstar of Great Britain looks to be out already. And there is number four, Porcel down. And number 38, one of the Italians, that's Antonio Cairoli, the ex-world MX2 champion. So two of the three, in fact, of the leading teams already in terrible trouble at the start of the very first race. Tommy Searle looks as if he may have been hurt as he went down on the Molson Kawasaki, the MX2 runner for Great Britain. Italian Antonio Caroli, the team leader for the Italians, the 2005 World MX2 champion, has gone down. But this man, number one, James Stewart, gets a terrific start. So James Stewart, who fought right the way through the season with Ricky Carmichael for honours in the AMA National Championships, but had some lurid crashes along the way, absolutely massive ones, and one of them coming out of Gravity Cavity at the fabled Unadilla Valley Raceway, upstate New York, out of Gravity Cavity, past the famous commentary tower. He had a mighty crash, so he's really pretty lucky to be in one piece. Poor Carmichael, not so fortunate. He was chasing James Stewart when he went down at Glen Helen two weeks ago. Oh, and already Stewart looking a bit edgy. The first... African-American to win any motorsports championship, James Stewart. AMA Rookie of the Year. The 20-year-old from Haines City, Florida, won that AMA Rookie of the Year title in 2002, his first year as a professional rider. And he 
and Stefan Evans have just taken off at the front with Villapoto getting a good start as well. He's in third place, so already the Americans looking like really class acts here. We knew that they would be. We thought that Ricky Carmichael's absence, although Carmichael is here to cheer on his team, we thought that Carmichael's absence might uh, affect their chances. But look at this, 30 minutes plus two laps. We have three of these electrifying races today. This is MX1 versus MX2. Then we have the Open Class versus MX2. And then MX1 versus the Open Class. Most of the Open Class... Right, oh, and there goes Stuart down in exactly the same place as Steve Bomber Ramon went down. Oh, and he gets in the way of his teammate. In exactly the same place as Ramon Dectic, but not quite as uncomfortably. He's struggling to restart. So there are Floridian... Here he goes. He just flicks a tear off and then momentarily loses his concentration, misses the rut that he needed to get that front wheel in right behind Everts, and Stewart goes down. But at least it looked a fairly easy launch off, he looks fairly comfortable. Meanwhile, fighting their way through, there's number 29, Carlos Campano of Spain. There are such good riders right the way down the track. That was a glimpse of Neville Bradshaw, who stood in at the last moment for Gareth Swanpole. Molson's Kawasaki's Gareth Swanpole, of course, suffering a bad dislocation of his shoulder in a multiple pile up at the final round of the British Championships at Hawkston Park. Now, Stefan Everts, well, he said he wanted to lead Belgium to victory to top off his magnificent career. But he's got this lad to contend with, Ryan Villapoto, the astonishing 18-year-old from Washington. Number five there in chasing him, Christophe Porcel. And Porcel was so anxious to deal with Villapoto. He beat him when they were both racing 80cc bikes a couple of years ago in the States. But now the 18-year-old Villapoto there, reigning US champ, being pursued by the 17-year-old reigning world MX2 champion, Christophe Porcel of France. This is fascinating stuff. So the Americans are going to be very, very much on, their, on the case here, whether we've got no Ricky Carmichael or not. And there is the 63-year-old Roger De Costa, five times world champion, an absolute legend in the States, four times winner of the Trans Am Championship over there. And when he finished his racing career, which he spent all his years with CZ and Suzuki until his final year in 1980, he went to, to America to work for Honda USA. And he was the man who brought over the first... Oh, and we got another man down. Number 105. And that's Kenneth Gunderson of Norway. Not where Kenneth wanted to be. As we catch up again with the remounted James Stewart. Stewart having to make his way back through the pack as we keep an eye on Christophe Porcel in his attempts to close the gap. He's uh, arrowed his way through now. Past the number 11 machine of Ben Townley. So Ben Townley was in the way, his predecessor, by two years as world MX2 champion. Ben Townley, of course, I'm not used to seeing him on a Kawasaki. He's riding for the uh, Monster Energy Drink Pro Circuit Kawasaki team and, more importantly, today for New Zealand. But he's been passed into third place. Townley there, the 21-year-old from New Zealand. Now living in Tallahassee in Florida. BT has been injured most of the year, but when he did manage a couple of one-off rides in the AMA Outdoor MX Light Championship, their MX2, he managed to finish on the rostrum. One of those rostrums where he was third overall at Redbud. And he's uh, certainly very happy to be back here. He was actually at the final round of the World Championships a, a year ago, a week ago, a week ago, cheering on his uh, great mate, Josh Coppins. Josh, of course, eventually seventh in that series after missing the first half of the year. Oh, look at Villapoto catching the Yamaha as he lands off the tabletop. And uh, these two kids, this is uh, nothing. This is to do with personal pride as much as it's to do with uh, national fervour. Frenchman Christophe Porcel. The French, of course, fought a hard, hard battle with the USA at Erne in France last year and it came off second best. A little unluckily, actually, because uh, it took the brilliant Sebastian Tortelli to be downed by Ivan Tedesco in the third race, so that, uh, and it was important for Tortelli to get a good score. It didn't matter that Tedesco didn't. Evans, Villapoto, Porcel, Townley, Stewart is back up in fifth place. 
ahead of Coppins, David Philipparts for Italy, Max Nagel for Germany, Tyler Rattray, the first of the South Africans, Finn Antipyrinen, the great Brit, Billy McKenzie on a 450 Yamaha now, and then Kevin Strybos riding the 250F Suzuki ahead of Tanel Leoc, 450 Kawasaki for Estonia. Uh, Daniel Reardon for Australia, Egar Leoc on the 250F bike for the uh, Estonians, and in 19th place, Martin Kohut, who of course rides for Slovakia, but is out of uh, Ireland and part of Roger McGee's Wolf Sport Honda squad. Marco Dub of Canada right the way back down in 28th place and 31st place for Brett Metcalf, who's been showing so well, of course, since he went off to the States, sixth in the AMA. Light, uh, MX Lights Championship and look at this comparison in styles there is Christophe Porcel trying to hang on to Villapoto just behind them another former world champion and then the next man interview James Stewart recovered from that prang it, it, Stewart says uh, it's really nice to be over here but it's particularly cool landing over here for the first time and being able to wear the number one plate <laughs> That team, of course, last year was Ricky Carmichael, Ivan Tedesco and Kevin Windham. Windham was one of the guys in the frame, but eventually the nod was given to Carmichael, this man James Stewart and Ryan Villapoto. In midair, Stewart glances across to his left to check out where the opposition's got to. James Bubba Stewart won the AMA 125 National Motocross Championship at his first attempt. And then in 2003, he won the 125 AMA West Supercross Championship Series. 2004, he won the 125 Eastern Supercross Region Supercross title, the one and the 125 National Championship before moving up onto the 250s. Well, in this case, of course, the 450F. At first, he raced the 250 two-stroke Kawasaki against the 450s until realizing that really in the end he was going to have to go onto the four-stroke onto the bigger more talky engine and this is James Stewart anxiously watched by Roger DeCosta and at the moment despite his fall the Americans are looking good October on Eurosport 2 Welcome back to Matterley Basin and James Stewart just being a little more careful as he drops into the rut at the drop, the bottom of that incline. Stefan Everts, he is looking to lead Belgium to what would be their 15th Motocross des Nations win, which would be one behind Great Britain on 16, the USA on 16. But right now, oh, and Stefan gets it a little bit cockeyed at the end of the whoops there, but just uh, calmly holds on to it. Past few weeks, unusually for him, he's been resting a bit between races and letting his body relax a bit rather than uh, hammering himself through his remorseless training routine. The immaculate, shortly to be 34-year-old. Uh, and uh, and uh, really, look, watch this. This was a nasty moment. Watch, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. But calmly and without his foot ever dropping off the foot peg, he just sorts the Yamaha out. Uh, unusual and uh, astonishing announcement was made yesterday here. Stefan Everts is to be the race supervisor, the race director for KTM in 2007. KTM proudly made that announcement. Pit Byra and the double world champion from Austria, Heinz Kinnigadner, introduced... Stefan Everts at a press, especially uh, reconvened press conference to announce that he indeed was to be their race supervisor in Europe for 2007. Now that's the gap between Villapoto here and Christophe Porcel. And at the moment, Villapoto, who they had some doubts about the sheer inexperience of, I mean, it's the first time he's come abroad. The kid only actually started racing professional motocross halfway through last year. He took in the last four rounds of the championship but of course Christophe Porcel right there behind him is also a relatively inexperienced man and this is James Stewart catching Ben Townley now so BT with very very little actual race practice recently only managed to do two AMA national championship rounds both times on the podium but they weren't consecutive ones because after injuring himself badly earlier in the year he then uh, did what he called a third degree separation of his shoulder which put him out again so he's come back off a second injury to race for New Zealand here. And the current standings. 
which you may well have glimpsed before I did. Because I was watching this battle going on. Here comes James Stewart trying to find a way round Ben Townley. Townley, of course, gave Ricky Carmichael a huge run for his money, riding on the 450 KTM last year at Ernay. He made a huge impression on the Americans. But he hasn't made a huge impression on that American because the Floridian, 20-year-old James Stewart on his 450 factory Kawasaki bounds past the 250F Kawasaki of Mitch Payton's Pro Circuit team, ridden by Ben Townley. And at the moment, looking very comfortable indeed, James Stewart. It was said this, this track, it has a feel about it of uh, an AMA outdoor national circuit and it was fancied that it might suit the Americans. Certainly suiting this fella. He won three events, of course, in his uh, debut season in Supercross, interrupted by an arm injury at Phoenix. But he's come back strongly in 2006. Ten wins out of 18 rounds Stewart took in the Supercross series, but still lost out to Ricky Carmichael. And this is the man carrying the usual number seven that's ridden by James Stewart. Stefan Everts, he's been five times a winner in the Motocross des Nations for Belgium, and he'd really love to equal that record of Roger de Costa's. He's won six. It would make him the joint winningest Belgium. And look at the way that Villa Porto gets that downhill double and drops right in to the apex of the left-handed turn. Beautiful riding from the kid. 18-year-old. A storming 2006 AMA Supercross Lights season, winning the 2006 AMA Motocross Lights Championship after a massively successful amateur career. And Porcel is beginning to drop back a bit now, not quite able to match the sheer consistency of Villaporto's lap times. Frenchman number five. Incidentally, uh, you'll notice that it was, I forgot to mention, Sebastian Porcel, originally the 21-year-old brother of this kid, selected for the squad, was then dropped in favour of Mikhail Pichon, and as a kind of protest, oh, and here comes Boba Stewart. Stewart's closing that gap on the world MX2 champion. Got the extra power of that 450F underneath him, of course. Bubba Stewart was handsomely the fastest man on track yesterday when conditions were a bit kinder with a, an amazing lap of 2 minutes 3.123. But, of course, we had two or three hours of heavy rain this morning that have made a difference. We catch up here with number 37, David Filipatz, who's going into MX1 next year with KTM and is riding the MX1 450 right here. The 250F of number 11, Ben Townley, leading the New Zealand charge with Josh Coppins a couple, a couple of places further back. So the New Zealanders are looking good. They've only ever been on the rostrum a couple of times, you know, in this event. Talking of which, Belgium have been on the rostrum 49 times out of 59 runnings of the event. So they are looking for a 50th podium. And, of course, you know which step they'd like to be on. But, unfortunately, Kevin Strybos racing the 250F rather than his customary 450F Suzuki, isn't is seemingly able to make ground. He's lying about 12th at the moment. Strybos not able to close down anybody in front of him and therefore help out his teammate Stefan Everts, who's leading handsomely. Townley has Josh Coppins a couple of places behind him, so New Zealand looking tidy. Townley in fifth place. Philip Hertz leading the Italian charge with poor Caroli way downfield. But Caroli's making terrific progress. The Italians could get back into it. Coppins, the second of the New Zealanders. Rattray, the first of the South Africans. Mackenzie still looking solid in 10th place, but really dropping well off the pace of Max Nagel. And Cairoli's up to 13th. Terrific performance by him. He's stormed past uh, Antti Pyrrhonen and Agar Leok. Daniel Reardon's dropped back on the Australian big bike rider, just ahead of Nev Bradshaw and Carlos Campano. Bradshaw, of course, on the 450F Motivision Suzuki, riding for South Africa alongside... Tyler Rattray and Wyatt Avis. Ryan Filippotto had a huge set to with Mike Alessi. Alessi just charged away into the lead of the uh, American AMA Lights Division. 
and it looked like he was going to take the championship cleanly for Red Bull KTM, but then he said he actually got a bit stressed being in the lead. He didn't much, it was actually quite a relief to him when this guy came back at him and grabbed uh, su successive victories at uh, Butts Creek, High Point, Butts Creek, Red Bud, and Unadilla Valley Raceway, all tracks he'd never seen before and uh, put himself back into the lead. But then he had a breakdown at his home track at Washougal that uh, Mitch Payton tuned 250F Kawasaki broke down on him. Made no odds. He came back to take the championship anyway. We're now looking for the second of those, and here's the battle going on. There's that uh, Kevin Strybos uh, being passed by Tanel Leok, number 16. So Strybos normally expects to have the 450 Suzuki underneath him, and he's just had the De Groot Kawasaki 450 of Tanel Leok. The Estonian Express charge past him. So rather than gaining ground, at the moment, Kevin Strybos, the 21-year-old from Giel in Belgium, is losing ground. Belgium still in a pretty good position, but not good enough. Look at that, the USA with a handsome six-point lead over Belgium and New Zealand. Italy are now fourth, thanks to the progress of Tony Cairoli after that uh, mess earlier on. And uh, France in seventh, eighth for Finland, ninth Australia. Don't forget, in the end, the results are counted best five out of six. So you can throw away one dire score. And at the moment, of course, Great Britain are at the bottom of the pile because they've lost Tommy Searle. Now, the question is, is Tommy going to be fit to ride the second race? Because if they're without him, then that's it. Their chances are absolutely gone. And there was so much hope that the, uh, the young British guys, the 17-year-old Tommy Searle, 22-year-old Billy McKenzie, and the guy who's just retained his MX2 British Championship, who would be out on the 450 KTM in the next race, Carl Nunn, would have a real chance of a podium or even an outside chance of a victory here. That was until we saw the Americans out on track yesterday and their blistering speed. This kid, Ryan Villiporto, he was the second fastest man out on track. Two minutes, 4.2 seconds was his fastest lap. Everett's fastest lap yesterday was two minutes, 5.4. But of course, conditions are a little bit crabbier in places today after all that rain. He's just kept the, uh, kept the dust down. And incidentally, you've got the 19 top nations out of 31 entered here there was a b final earlier today which was won by cornell nemet of hungary though i don't think his team took the overall but uh, the b final of course was uh, 12 nations who didn't manage to come through and looking anxiously over his shoulder patrick walther of switzerland number 44 is now in a position where the blue flags are waving and he, nearly, he needs to keep out of the way because the big boys are a-coming. There's no sign, of course, of Gordon Crockard because the former, as we take a quick little glance at the standings, look at this, nine laps in, Everts has the lead by 11 and a half seconds from this kid, Ryan Villiporto. James Stewart now into third place ahead of uh, Christophe Porcel, Ben Townley. Townley and Coppins are the guys who are keeping New Zealand very much in the fray. And Billy McKenzie in 10th place. Well, Great Britain will emerge with just those 10 points if Billy Mack can hold on to that on the Bike It Dixon Yamaha. Bike It and Dixon, of course, are the people who've promoted and organised this event. A huge undertaking. Just the sheer superstructure of the thing. Cairoli still there in 13th place. Can he get any further on than that? He wouldn't put it past him. He's got Kelvin, Kevin Strybos and Tanel Leog and Billy McKenzie ahead of him. And Jonathan Barrigan's having to fight his way through for the Spaniards. He would have been one of the... Uh, he would have been the linchpin of the Spanish team, he would have thought, but another victim of that fracas on the first lap. Everts, who had that dream finish to his career with his 101st, 101 Grand Prix, no sign of a Dalmatian, but 101 Grand Prix victories at Ernay in France. And there is the man whose records he beat, 63-year-old Joel Robert, six times World 250cc motocross champion, 50 times a Grand Prix winner, one of the great beer-swilling, cigarette-smoking heroes of 1960s and early 70s motocross, and uh, the man who inspired this guy, Stefan Everts, when he was a kid. Joel Robert is the Belgian team manager. He looked fairly resigned to things, didn't he, at the moment? There he is on the left-hand side. 
He was a wizard. When he was a 20-year-old, riding for CZ, 1964, he won the, the first... That he was the youngest ever world champion at that time. And look how difficult it is for uh, the guys who are about to be lapped. You realise just how tricky this is. Now, Stefan Evans doesn't much care for people getting his way, does he? That's uh, Yohi Kojima of Japan. The Japanese doing well to qualify. We welcome back Akira Narita, who was, of course, uh, rolled a season or two stateside. And, of course, the absolutely lovable Yoshi Atsuta, who came over as a 24-year-old double champion from, from Japan and is at the, uh, presently leading that championship by three points, actually, back in Japan, from Akira Narita. There's a terrific battle going on between two of the members of the Japan squad back home. And incidentally, their manager, get this, Tetsumi Mitsuasu, a little guy who's now supervisor of Yamaha's racing program in Japan, as the stars and stripes fly for this guy, Ryan Filippotto, and the man behind him, James Stewart. But uh, Mitsuasu finished fifth in the 125cc World Championship of 1980, behind Harry Everts and Akira Watanabe. And that was for Yamaha. This is Kawasaki's second and third place men in the race, but leaders on the world team stage at the moment, Villapoto and Stewart. And Stewart looks fairly determined to get the better of Ryan Villapoto. I should think he's reckoning, well, I'm on the 450. I should, really. James Stewart obviously made of India rubber because he's had some really massive prangs in the AMA Outdoor Nationals and he somehow bounced and survived them. Although it has to be said that when he crashed in practice at Unadilla, he never came back out to race. His, both his bike and himself were far too second-hand to race that day. An almost identical, balletic approach by the two lads. Roger De Costa, though, always has that anxious look on his face. He's a lovely, lovely man. Just uh, loves the sport and everything about it. And since 25 years it is, since 1981, when he personally got together that four-man Honda US squad that came over and won the trophy, because there used to be 250cc and 500cc events, the trophy and motocross de nation in successive weekends for the States. And that was the first time they'd won it. They had finished runners-up twice in the 70s, back in 1974, with Brad Lackey and the late lamented, recently deceased Jim Pomeroy. And again in 1977, they finished second. But it was 1981 when they first they started an amazing run of 13 successive victories until the British came out of nowhere at Roggenberg in Switzerland in 1994, as we see uh, a pile-up that I think involves two of the back markers rather than any of the front men. And it's, uh, it's the Japanese boy, number 35, Yohi Kojima, on his 250F Suzuki. And these two were identical riding stars we're seeing. The two Americans showing how these deep ruts should be dealt with. James Stewart looking for those smoother lines, trying to get out of the roost of the bike ahead of him. As they lap number 56. At least I think it was number 56. But they've got through pretty smartly. And this now a battle for second place, but really the States are going to go into the clubhouse with a score of five for second and third places if these two lads just stay on two wheels. Well, there you are. We keep going back to uh, number 56. And uh, I didn't think I had a number 56 in the race. So there we are. We worked that out some other time. Fantastic setting here. When everybody first arrived late in the week on Thursday, there was some a torrential rain. And then a, there was a beautiful day on Saturday. Friday was wet. Yesterday was lovely. And the way that the track has rutted out will, uh, quite suited the Americans yesterday. But with having had that heavy rain this morning, that has meant that uh, 
Stefan Everts, have, having got the whole shot, of course, which is a, an absolutely vital commodity, has been able to tiptoe his way through ahead of these guys as Stewart goes for the inside line and then st digs deep down to the outside berm, giving Villaporto the chance to turn tight. But underneath a Belgian flag, James Stewart has the power from that 450 F Kawasaki to launch himself through into second place. So James Stewart moves second. The 20-year-old takes the 18-year-old. Roger De Costa just hopes that they'll behave themselves. De Costa, who won his very final Grand Prix, the Luxembourg Grand Prix of 1980 for Honda, before exiting Europe and heading over to the United States to work for Honda America. Now, of course, he's the head honcho at Suzuki. Ricky Carmichael is his main man, but Ivan Tedesco will be out in the next race, which will be bringing you live right on top of this one. This is the race that's just happened. It was uh, ending as we came on air, and then the next race will bring together the Open Class boys and the MX2. So these guys, like Stefan Everts... Oh, Everts, I thought he was going down. Everts and the MX1 boys have the luxury of a rest during the afternoon if watching your teammates can call being a rest. And then they come out to face the open classes at the end of the day. Stefan Everts, of course, won at Learop. That was Steve Ramon we caught a glimpse of them. Steve Ramon with Stefan Everts and Kevin Strybos were the winning team at Learop in, on October the 2nd and 3rd, 2004, the last time that Belgium won. The Americans, of course, hadn't sent a team over that year. And... Uh, that day, Belgium beat the Netherlands, France, Estonia and South Africa. The Netherlands, astonishingly, haven't qualified for this main race. Uh, Mark de Rover, riding a very special 450 KTM rather than his usual 250 bike in preparation for taking over on this team, on Stefan Everts' team next year, of course, with uh, Michele Rinaldi's Yamaha squad. He, um, he wasn't able to do enough to get his team through. Bas Verhoeven and George Strick were uh, way, way out of uh, time. And that meant that the Netherlands were demoted to the B-final. What an extraordinary insult to them. And their, their team manager, the double world champion, John Vandenberg. Everywhere you look, in fact, you'll see there are uh, some intriguing people as team managers. Not least, of course, Rob Herring, a ten-time uh, British motocross and supercross champion who was uh, actually riding for Great Britain when they won that famous victory in 1994. And uh, Robbie Herring, the man at the helm for Great Britain this time around. Stephen Everts consistently lapping his lap times absolutely reflecting those of this man, number one, James Stewart. And Ryan Filippotto being uh, towed along by his teammate now, so they're looking very comfortable in second and third places. I do wish we still scored this separately. We used to score it separately, so Ryan Filippotto would get a one point for leading the 125cc class home. That would be interesting, because the next 125 along is Christophe Porcel in fourth place, Ben Townley fifth. How well... I beg your pardon, the 125s, the 250Fs then, the MX2s. How well are those guys shaping up against the big lads? Fantastic performance by them. So we've got uh, 250Fs, third, fourth and fifth, then Josh Coppins, the next MX1 guy in sixth, ahead of David Philippards and Max Nagel. And then... Uh, it looks as if Billy McKenzie has dropped downfield. Billy McKenzie has dropped back to about 13th place. And Cairoli now is storming through on Kevin Stribos and Tannel Leoc. So Cairoli goes top 12 with two laps to go. And in fact, Tannel Leoc and Kevin Stribos are really feeling the heat from the Takali Yamaha of the 2005 MX2 world champion, Antonio Cairoli. And, of course, all this matters so much in counting up those precious points at the end of the day because each team could drop just the one score. Every other matters. Everts looking for lines that steer him clear of the back markers he's amongst now. Can you imagine what it was like when China were out there in the uh, qualifying races yesterday, getting lapped three times? So the very gallant Chinese squad including uh, Li Shi on his Honda. He was lapped, uh, he was three laps down at the end of 12, for example, with a best lap of two minutes 56, which was about 52 seconds off the pace. They weren't really, it didn't look as if they were allowed to leave the ground. Look at this, 14 laps in. Philip Arts, Nagel having a really good race, it has to be said. And this is uh, Kelly, 
with uh, Michele Rinaldi, background left there. And Cairoli's gone through. Cairoli through to 10th place. Strybos and Leoc have been trodden on by Antonio Cairoli. He's stormed through from right at the back of the field. What a great ride by the scalding little Sicilian. So he's uh, rescuing Italy. David Philippard's on seven. That puts them on 17 points. It's still a bit of a still a bit of a handful, but they're better than it might have been. Mackenzie managed to restart. He's in 13th place. There wasn't only Steve Ramon in that box, incidentally. There was Marie Bavot, who, of course, was part of the team when the amazing Mudfest of 1998 was last in England. That's Steve Ramon. He's next out. Well, Marie Bavot, one of the winning team with Joel Smets and this maestro, Stefan Everts, the only man, really, who managed to get round the quagmire that was Fox Hill in 1998 after two days of horrendous torrential rain. The cruelest trick ever played on promoter John Haller. And then we've got another man burying the nose of his bike in the uh, track side there. As Stefan Everts goes into his last lap. And of course, what everybody, the fans of uh, Great Britain and everywhere else were looking forward to was the opportunity of seeing Stefan Everts take on Ricky Carmichael, two outstanding competitors with ten championships apiece, one of them in the world, one of them in the USA, who are retiring at the end of this year from full-time competition. Although you can see Stefan Everts one more time. Remember the Western Superman Beach Race, October the 22nd, the weekend of the 21st and 22nd. But uh, not only Stefan Everts, Tyler Rattray and Joel Smets are going to be out there. And on Saturday, Gordon Crockard, if he recovers, because Crockstar has suffered a horrendous concussion, he was taken out in a huge first lap crash when someone landed on his back and his head on the, on the opening lap of his qualifying race yesterday. So Ireland uh, completely out of the tournament. And uh, Gordon Crockard uh, is going to do put in an appearance as a sidecar passenger for charity. So go and see the Crockstar on the Saturday in the three and four wheeled race. And this guy, Stefan Everts, winner in 2004 of the Western Beach race, will be back for his absolute swan song in the United Kingdom. Great Britain then on 13, uh, 13th place because they lose 40 points for a DNF. How cruel is that? So Billy McKenzie's 13 points becomes 53 because of Tommy Searle being laid out on the first lap. Stefan Everts. It was a long time before he won a motocross to Nations, you know, because the, the first motocross de Nation that he was a, a part of with Dirk Gherkins, Jackie Martins, back in 1990, they finished second to who else but America. 1991, second again with Bervoorts and Gherkins to the USA. 1992, second again with Georges Jobet and Manique Bavolt, but uh, he's certainly taken the win here. Stefan Everts takes the first race victory. One point on the board for Belgium, but not getting the backup that he could have done with. And Joel Robert knows that there's a bit of a mountain to climb here for his team, especially as those Americans have done the deed by coming in second and third. But behind them, Christophe Porcel hangs on to fourth place. Ben Townley and Josh Cobbins get through past David Philippards into sixth. So Townley and Cobbins, uh, a good ride for them, for those two. That puts them strongly on 11 points in second place, I think. And then Philippards seventh for Italy, Nagel eighth for Germany, but without any backup. Rattray ninth for South Africa with Nev Bradshaw 18th. Tony Cairoli in 10th place, so 17 points on the board for the Italians. Stribos 11th, 12 points on the board for Belgium. They are just behind New Zealand by one point. Consistency really matters in this game. Sebastian Porcel has 15 points. Christophe Porcel has four, so 19 points for the French. This is really intriguing. And of course, remember, what a magnificent sight here. Matterley Basin, just outside Winchester, brings back memories of that wonderful song, Winchester Cathedral. Stop letting me down. Well, Matterley Basin hasn't let anybody down here. What a great atmosphere. The uh, Motocross de Nation, the Motocross of Nations, as it's now been called the last couple of years. 
The Americans won it last year at Ernay in France. They beat the French. They scored lost. They scored the mounted 16 points. The French had 24. Belgium third with 31 ahead of New Zealand and Great Britain. But Everts takes the first victory. Stewart and Villaporta, though, are already well on the way for the USA. Italy and Belgium are still in with a shout. Great Britain, not realistically. A lot depends on whether Tommy Sell's well enough to come out for the second race, what sort of state the kid's in. The Australians consistently poor. Brett Metcalf, 20th place. And Daniel Reedon dropped back to 21st, ahead of Martin Corhoot on the Wolf Sport Honda. Akira Narita, a disappointing 27th just after a spill, just ahead of his teammate Kojima. And Marco Dube, even more disappointing for the Canadians, for whom Carlton Fasciati, who's well known for uh, retired on lap two. Fasciati, of course, the teenager who's well known to uh, British people who like to go and watch him at the Sheffield uh, and other supercrosses in the UK. He'll be back on the 28th at Sheffield Arena. USA, five points. New Zealand, 11. Belgium, 12. Italy, 17. In fact, we could have those, done with those points just on there a little longer, could have, so we could have seen what's going to happen when we get into the next race, because, of course, when the next race comes along, it's going to be really crucial which points are where for the teams at the moment. That, then, was the first race, the second one to come. <laughs> Belgium one point further back in third place when we were last in the United Kingdom of course in that amazing glop that was the motocross of nations of 1998 New Zealand were on the podium in third place these are the guys you'll be seeing Jussi Bevelainen will be out a favourite, of course, Blair Morgan, alongside Marco Dube for Canada. And uh, we've lost Kenneth Gunderson after his accident in race one. So only one Norwegian coming out. Mark Ristori coming out as the open classer for Switzerland. He, of course, the son of Louis Ristori, a 1980s Grand Prix motocrosser. And this is uh, the completely cool, calm, collected reigning MX2 lights champion from the States, Ryan Villapoto. Only our cameraman fell down. And plenty of American flags flying, and uh, a few Americans around here, of course. Not only Ricky Carmichael, but also uh, Jeff Emig, who was a member of the winning team in Austria in 1993, but also a member of the losing team at Roggenberg in 1994. Just sat all alone on the hillside in tears, Jeff Rowe did, after that defeat. Well, uh, he's here enjoying the atmosphere of the motocross de Nation and also some wonderful road racers uh, around the place as well. They love their motocross, their trials, their off-road stuff. This is Kevin Stripos. He really needs a better start on the 250F uh, Suzuki because uh, he may look happy with life, but the 21-year-olds rather let his team down in race one. And the Belgian flags are flying uh, in support of Steve Ramon and Kevin Stribos on their factory Suzuki's. The lineup for race two of the Motocross de Nation and the first, uh, the last chance rather, we'll get to see those MX2 lads. They are back on the line and once again they've selected the inside. The very inside line has been, uh, gate has been selected by Ryan Villapoto because the, the Americans qualified best with just two points. And then France qualified second. So right beside Villapoto, you've got uh, number five, and that is Christophe Porcel, the reigning World MX2 champion. It's fascinating, this. This is just so good. Ivan Tedesco, of course, will be out. Tedesco from Albuquerque in New Mexico. Be interesting to see what he can do, because he's the... Well, I say the potential weak link in the state. He was fourth in the 250 AMA Supercross Championship behind the big three of Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed, and James Stewart. Of course, we've lost a few guys through injuries. Chad Reed not able to ride for Australia, nor Michael Byrne, nor Grant Langston from South Africa. 
So really, yeah, the, the Americans not the only team to have been inflicted by injuries. And all eyes, it seemed then, on the five-second to go, girl, as she's ushered off trackside. Oh, and Billy Porto again gets a blinding start up the inside and fills in his great rival, Christophe Porcel. But everybody looks to be safely through the first turn at this stage. Oh, dear me, look, if you've not made a good start, how much work have you got to do? And I'll tell you what, number nine, Steve Ramon did not make a good start, but his teammate has also backed in, he's just ahead of him. So Ramon makes a terrible start, he's got work to do. And that's what uh, the Americans will love to see, the Belgians struggling downfield. Because that means that they're going to have to work hard to get through the pack. But of course, for someone like Kevin Stribos, it's his last race of the day. BT's right up near the front. Number 11, Ben Townley on the New Zealander on the Mitch Payton Kawasaki is there. And number three, Ivan Tedesco, has made a blinding start. So Tedesco in uh, unfamiliar colours because, of course, he was very much a late addition to the team. And there's one thing, you know, that Ivan wouldn't have a, a kit. Right, Ricky Carmichael's kit wouldn't fit him. So he's in, uh, he's in his red... Stars and Stripes livery on the 450 Kawasaki. So number three, Ivan Tedesco, has got out of the trap. And I think it might be number five, Christophe Porcel, who's emerged in second place. But Tedesco from Albuquerque, New Mexico, has the lead. Oh, dear me, that's the second time he's done that and lost, lost his outside foot peg. Porcel in second place. Third is Ben Townley. And this is, uh, this is, of course, a really crucial race, the second race. Remember that uh, the best three results out of the four could realistically count at the end of this race on the assumption that there'll be a worse result in race six. But you can't guarantee that. Now, Townley is really attacking Christophe Porcel. Porcel, 2006 MX2 World Champion. Townley, MX2 World Champion 2004, third in the MX1 Championship for KTM in 2005, and then off to the States, where he's been largely injured. So the battle on for second place. And number two, Ryan Villaporto in fourth place. So once again, those three Kawasaki's strung out together. And Villaporto needs no target, and at the moment, the Yaks lying first and fourth, which means that they're still in the lead if you add the... Uh, oh, dear me, if you add the points together for two races. They're going to cakewalk this. Cairoli's got a better start. He's fifth. And Jussi Vevelainen in sixth place for Finland and, and uh, the former Motivation Suzuki star. Tyler Rattray for South Africa ahead of his teammate, Wyatt Davis. Ramon is now through to ninth. Tenth for Carl Nunn. And Searle is out, he's in 16th place, feeling a bit second-hand ahead of Matty Seistler, the second of the Finns. Metcalf's got a better start. Cody Cooper is the weak link for the New Zealanders. He's down in 20th place. The Americans just don't have a weak link. We thought it could potentially be Ivan Tedesco, their late substitute, but somehow I think not. That was number 38. The skimpy little Sicilian star. And once again, it's the 250F guys who are at the front. Tedesco leads on the big Suzuki. But look at this. Porcel, Townley, Villaporto, Cairoli, uh, all MX2 stars. And three of them world champions. Uh, one of them an AMA American national champion. What a setup. And here's Villaporto beginning to attack the far from race fit Ben Townley. But BT is determined. Christophe Porcel in second place. But where is Purcell's teammate? The very, very, the very big weak league in their team has got to be the MX3, the MX3 uh, world champion. I can't, I can't even see where he is on the list. Uh, Yves Demaria, 36th place. So the French already in big trouble. And also, there's no sign of the Italian who finished in third place in the MX3 World Championship, Christian Beggy for Honda. He's riding for Italy. The MX3 guys, we didn't think they'd be on the same planet as these MX2 and MX1 stars, realistically. And look at that. Four. Um, they are the, simply the four fastest MX2 riders on the planet right now, and they're all together. Porcel leads Villipoto. I beg your pardon, leads Townley, Villipoto, and Tony Cairoli.
and the United States have a massive advantage. Belgium 31, New Zealand 32, South Africa 41, and the rest. And that, that just doesn't look terribly encouraging from any, anybody this side of the Atlantic. And it would mean that the USA would take their 17th Border Cross a Nations victory. That would move them past Great Britain on 16. And remember, Great Britain won the first ever one at Vassenaar in the Netherlands back in 1947. It was the first ever World Championship, this event. It came into being 10 years before the World 500cc Motocross Championship in 1957. Car Caroli looks very, very keen to get past Villepoto number two. Caroli riding an unfamiliar number 38 for the Italians. Rattray's got past Vevelain and into sixth place, so we now have the MX2 guys second through sixth. Wyatt Davis eighth, ninth Steve Ramon, he's got to make some progress. Strybos has moved past Carl Nunn into tenth, and Nunny, who's on the 450 KTM, though he's going to ride for Yamaha next year, has been pushed back to 11th ahead of Carlos Campano. Tommy Searle through to 13th, so 17-year-old Tommy Searle, runner-up in the British Championship, giving it a big goal. Filippotto is now pressing Ben Townley hard. And he's just opened up a small gap over Cairoli. This is fascinating. This, this really is about individual on us. It's, it's like the, uh, the team on us are almost wrapped up, couldn't dried. Ryan Villipoto finished third in the West Coast Lights Championship final standings behind his teammate Grant Langston and Andrew Short. Villipoto only won the once indoors, but uh, he's dominated the, dominated the second half of the season outdoors to take that championship ahead of Michael Alessi. And he's looking for a way through. Ooh, and uh, Cairoli looking ragged as he tries to stay on terms with the Kawasaki's. He's got three Kawasaki's ahead of him. Very impressive riding by Ben Townley, number 11, the 21-year-old from Topo in New Zealand, now, as I say, right, residing in Tallahassee in Florida. Just uh, raced Red Bull and Glen Helen, getting on the rostrum both times, of course, in the AMA Outdoor Series. Oh, great riding. Meanwhile, at the front, look at this. Uh, without another big ball bike anywhere near him, Ivan Tedesco is dominating this. Tedesco, as I said, his main contribution really at Erne a year ago uh, was uh, torpedoing Sebastian Tortelli. The impact put them both down, but the score would matter much, much more to the French. They could drop Tedesco's score. They needed a good one from Tortelli, and because of that incident, they didn't get it. He's got a brick run. Oh, and we've got a faller, and it's Christian Porcel has gone down. Christophe Porcel has gone down. So the reigning world champion drops his Kawasaki. Oh, well, you know how long-faced he was when he just won a world championship. What's he going to feel like now? And this is what happened. It's as simple as... Oh, he got it horribly wrong. Ouch. -a. He went down hard. Townley got uh, blocked trying to avoid him, but fortunately went the right way. And suddenly we're reduced to three of the top MX2 riders in the world because the reigning world champion, the relatively inexperienced Christophe Porcel, goes down. Interesting. He got passed by uh, Caroli and by Tyler Rattray, number 26. So Tedesco, Townley, Villapoto, the first three. The state's now going 1-3. Uh, so they really have an astonishing lead in this contest. In fact, they're going to be... It could be that they're going to be out of reach after two out of, uh, after two out of three races. Townley still trying to hang on. Villipoto looks underneath and finds a tight line. Oh, and holds it and gets the power down brilliantly. That's what makes this kid such an outstanding prospect. But Townley goes straight past underneath him. And remember, these guys are teammates of Mitch Payton's monster energy drink Kawasaki squad oh dear <laughs> as well as being teammates for the USA I 
and as the sun creeps behind the clouds the heat on the track burns fiercely townley new zealand villapoto usa cairoli italy Ooh, tony cairoli really desperate to find a way through on the Dakali yamaha he was in, he was such a good sport he so graciously handed over his mx2 world crown last weekend to christophe porcel And here, once again, goal! Oh, what a move by Villapoto. He goes for a gap that really wasn't there. And it's what Ricky Johnson used to say, the American legend who uh, contributed to that blistering performance at Maggiore in Italy 20 years ago when the Americans absolutely dominated. He said that every conceivable split second counts in the turns, between the turns. You have to make the most of every split second you can garner. And if you could just spit a bike past somebody else like that, just by going straight lining it and going for that half a gap, that smidgen of a chance. What an illustration of that from Ryan Villaporto. He's there. He's through to second. The States are running one, two. They're absolutely careering away with this contest. Well, Roger Tacosta said it would be absolutely great to go away with the Peter Chamberlain trophy for the 17th time and break the record as Cairoli looks to try and get past Ben Townley because he'll know now that he's losing touch with Villapoto. Villapoto's best lap time, 2 minutes 8.8. .8. Townley's 2 minutes 9.6. Cairoli looking for the inside. He's not going to find it there. Again, he looks from the inside. He's obviously uh, kept a keen eye on what Villapoto was doing when he was trying to find a way past Ben Townley. And he's trying a few things for himself, including the, uh, the hectic dash around the outside. Oof. Christophe Porcel is in sixth place, two seconds ahead of Kevin Stryber, seventh, Steve Ramon, eighth. The Belgians aren't right riding for the lead anymore, they're way out of it. But Christophe Porcel, in fact, has dropped behind the two Suzuki, so Porcel, a detuned Christophe Porcel, down to eighth place ahead of Jussi Bevelainen and Wyatt Avis and Carl Nunn. Already being lapped is number 50, Marco Doob. You would believe that Marco Doob, the, uh, the freckle-faced Canadian, is actually, he's a terrific supercrosser, but not enjoying much fun outdoors for Canada right now. USA 8, Belgium 25, New Zealand 29. And New Zealand's 29, of course, is due to the fact that they've got to take in. And there's Claudio Di Carli, former 500 GP star, watching keenly this battle between Ben Townley, 2004 world champion, and his own rider, Tony Cairoli, 2005 world champ. And uh, Cody Cooper of New Zealand is making progress. He's moved up to 15th place. He's about three seconds behind Agar Leok. So Cody Cooper moves up to 15th place with Christian Beggy. He and the, uh, the Italian moving through the field together, 15th and 16th, with Mark Ristori. So uh, can Cody Cooper get any further up? He needs to get the points for New Zealand. Because that man, Ben Townley, is riding a bit of a lonesome race for the New Zealanders right now in an attempt to get them what would only be their third ever podium in this event. at Foxhill in 1980, of course, uh, it was Josh Coppin, Shane King and Daryl King who were the guys who led New Zealand to that third place. Well, impressive ride by Ivan Tedesco. Fourth in the AMA Supercross Championships this year for the Makita Suzuki squad, and I should think under the nose of the American team manager, Roger De Costa, who's also the uh, Makita Suzuki boss back home, he'll be uh, ensuring he might have a ride with Suzuki again in 2007. First followed his brother Gio over to the, um, up from New Mexico to finish 15th in the 1999-125 West Coast Championship after starting racing at eight years old. Ivan Tedesco, look at the crowds there watching this uh, duel between Ben Townley and Cairoli. And just ahead of them, and not by far at the moment, the lead is uh, about 1.3 seconds for Tedesco over Villapoto as Cairoli once again goes for the inside and has Townley left the door open this time. Ooh, not quite. Townley, of course, won the championship 
with Cairoli in third place into his hands. Oh, Cairoli tries to make the move that Villapodo did, but of course he hadn't energised the move by getting that sprint down the inside. He tried to do it in the turn and it wasn't quite enough, but it might be now. No, he's come up short. No, he hasn't. He's come up long. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Whoa. Incidentally, uh, New Zealand's team manager. It's uh, good to welcome Russell Burling, the 50-year-old Russell Burling, back here to uh, Europe because he was actually a mechanic for Craig Coleman in the 125cc motocross GPs for three years back in the early 80s. And the 250 GP, 125 and 250 GPs. It's amazing how these people resurface. And there, there is Shane King, 1996 500cc world champion, wearing the, uh, the colours of New Zealand and urging on Ben Townley, who's just been uh, stomped on by number 38, Antonio Cairoli. So Cairoli moves through to third place. Uh, I beg your pardon, Cairoli to third, Townley down to fourth. Ryan Villapoto, number two, has just let, set the fastest time of the race on his 250F Kawasaki. And bike number two is closing down on bike number three. Ivan Tedesco on his 450 Suzuki. What a rider this kid is. Oh, dear me. So the Americans running one, two. But at the moment, their positions could be reversed. And also, Cairoli's on the case. Cairoli set his fastest lap of 2 minutes, 8.8. .8, a couple of tenths of a second faster than Tedesco on that lap. So, Tedesco, 3. Filippoto, 2. Cairoli, 38. Townley, 11. They are the guys at the front. Rat Train is in fifth. Sixth, Kevin Strybos now. Steven, seventh, Steve Ramon, ahead of Christophe Porcel and Yusuf Evelainen. And Tommy Searle has moved through to tenth place, ahead of Carlos Campano and his British teammate. Tommy's British teammate, Carl Nunn. Wyatt Avis, 13th, 14th, Agar Leon, 15th, still Cody Cooper. He's now, he cut the advantage down to two and a half seconds, but he needs to get higher up to help New Zealand. And number 11, Ben Townley. The Union Jack being waved in support of the amazing... Tommy Searle now up to 10th place. Whoa! And uh, Billy Porter gets it all wrong and almost he takes down the fencing and he loses at least one place. So finally we, we see a mistake from the kid. Ryan Billy Porter gets himself in a muddle and uh, that gives both Cairoli and Townley the chance to go through. Now, can the show bosses... Oh, look at this. He comes straight back. Absolutely unflustered by that colossal mistake. He comes straight back at Ben Townley. Can BT hold him off? As, as I said, Townley, remember, coming back from injury. Coming back a uh, severe leg injury and from a shoulder separation. So really, he's doing amazingly well to race with this ferocity. And that was a crucial moment, but he held off Villapoto for third place. <laughs> wow, what a race. And behind them, you can see the Tyler Rattray. The man who won the first three Grand Prix of the year in the MX2 class had won the last three Grand Prix of last year, but both seasons got injured. He also is coming through. He, of course, suffered a dislocated shoulder. It seems to be an American disease when he went over for a one-off ride in the States because the 20-year-old South African from Durban does want to go over there and race in America against the likes of this guy. Ryan Villapoto. This is where Villapoto got it wrong. There's Tedesco. Here's Villapoto. He just cuts it a bit too fine. Oh, he really was lucky to get away with that, wasn't he? Very, very lucky indeed. And that was a brave pressman who refused to yield this ground. So Villapoto now looking a little bit ragged, but still looks uh, arrow sharp across the whoops. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> At the front, Tedesco still leads. A double winner at Paris-Bercy back in 2001. And Cairoli trying to nail him down. He's Cairoli this time set a lap of 2 minutes, 8.6, 4 tenths quicker. So he's nibbling away at that lead with 10 minutes, just under 11 minutes plus 2 laps to go in this gripping contest. Cairoli, can he do it for Europe? The Europeans, it really is a bit of a Ryder Cup, this game. The Europeans love to gang up on the Americans. In fact, all the Europeans were so thrilled when the USA were unexpectedly beaten for the first time in 14 years by Great Britain at Roggenberg in Switzerland in 1994. Everybody was coming up to congratulate the boys. 
That, of course, was uh, Robbie Herring, Kurt Nickel, and Paul Malin. Oh, dear me. And there's some great urging on going here down, down, down there for the Kawasaki trio. Now we're getting in amongst the back markers. This could be critical, and suddenly Tedesco finds that Cairoli, isn't it amazing how these, when they first put the 125s in against the 250s and the 500s, at Gaeldorf in 1985, the first time that the Motocross to Nations ran this format, everybody thought the 125s would be crucified, but they weren't. And look at this, look at the way the 250F top guys are able to run with the MX1 fellas and the open class fellas. This is Cairoli proving the point by nailing it in pursuit. Oops, Daisy, that was uh, number 36, Yoshiet Suter on his Honda. It's getting uh, out of the way, but Cairoli, look at this. Oh, Cairoli goes for the inside, a big moment then from Tedesco, throws it all off balance, and uh, suddenly the Takali Yamaha through and the whole valley lights up. Cairoli, the immensely popular little Italian who just lost his cherished two, one, MX2 World Championship crown last weekend, is suddenly at the front. And remember the joy of Alessandro Puzza when, as reigning champion in 1990, he won a race at Vimmerby in Sweden for the Italians and beat the Americans. He was overjoyed. I've got a feeling if Antonio Cairoli could nail this one, he too regardless of what happens with his teammates and the overall he will just be thrilled so suddenly we have a new race winner Cairoli with spectacular Italian nationalistic Pier Francesco Chili helmet is there at the front what about Ben Tanley Ben BT close it all he's last, last lap time at two minutes 9.5 Beg your pardon, 9.9 .9 was almost identical to Tedesco, so he's not closing the gap. This is uh, Billy Porto in fourth place. He's got a handy gap over Styler Rattray. Remember, Rattray will be at the Western Beach Race with Stefan Evans and Joel Smets. On October the 22nd, we watch Frederick Aulisseifer uh, of Norway. Sorry, Fred, I'm not very good on that, pronouncing that particular name. I can pronounce this one. New Mexico's Ivan Tedesco. And Tedesco keeping the pressure on now that uh, Caroli's got through. Mind you, he's always good at leading from the front. Oh dear, commentator's curse. Grab a piece of wood to hold on to for a moment. And Villapoto beginning to come back on number 11, Ben Townley. Townley's teammate Cody Cooper is marooned rather in, although he's closing the gap all the time. He's got Agar Leoc's advantage down to one second now. Cody Cooper in 15th place. Realistically, you've got to count all the scores after two races. Five out of six score at the end of the afternoon. Billy Porto, a sharp glance over his left shoulder to check. Well, I, I would say at the moment he's got a handy lead of about seven seconds over Tyler Rattray, so he's got no problems there. And it's noticeable that their speed absolutely matching one another blow for blow now on his first race back he couldn't really hang on to Michael Alessi and Ryan Filippotto not surprisingly number 11 Ben Townley in the AMA Nationals but he's certainly proving that he's coming back to the sort of form we expect of him he was such a great rider last year on the 450 KTM which despite mechanical failure that really let him down he was very close in the championship and gave uh, Stefan Everett some of his greatest challenges and Townley is, once again, closing the gap on Tedesco. There must be time, there must be moments on this track when the brute power of the 450 Suzuki carries that number three plate away. But the extra maneuverability and whippability of these little 250F four-strokes, well, two Kawasaki's together, is certainly launching an attack. At the moment, though, Tedesco's still there in second. Patrick Walter of Switzerland, number 44, glancing over his shoulder to make sure he doesn't get in the way of these guys. Look at the style of uh, Ryan Villapoto, number two. Elbows dropped. He's just uh, got a, 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 It's almost an old-fashioned, new fashion that the kids have introduced now into the States. And that the way these American riders are going at the moment, they're going to be pretty much out of sight of the rest by the end of this race. 11 laps in for number 11, Ben Townley. Steve Ramon has got past Tyler Rattray into fifth place. 
with Kevin Stribos in seventh. So another 12-point haul looking likely at the moment to make a total of 24 for the Belgians. Oh, there it is in front of me, sorry. USA on 11, New Zealand 29, Italy on 34, South Africa 45. Great Britain in 10th place, 76. But of course, that's a rather cruel score because it includes a DNF for Tommy Searle in race one as uh, Jus Lanzo, Jus Lanzo, number 18, riding for Estonia as the open classer. He caused a stir. He was the AMA's Rookie of the Year in the 250 Nationals, you know, last year. And I thought, hey, who's this guy from uh, the Far East, 23-year-old, 22-year-old, who we've never heard of? He must be good. Well, actually, he's not that good, folks. It goes to show that the strength and depth in the AMA Nationals isn't actually that colossal. So Lanzo gets lapped by Caroli. Stribos uh, is there in seventh. Christophe Postel still holding on to eighth place ahead of Vevelin and Searle, Campano and Wyatt Avis. But there's absolutely no sign of the uh, the next Frenchman. I think they may have made a bit of a mistake by going for Yves de Maria. He's in 25th place. Yves de Maria, 34-year-old veteran in 25th place in the race. So not doing the French any favours at all right now. faces in the rarest garages by the way other other uh, people we can welcome back to Europe uh, the Australian team manager is Gary Ben that's Claudio De Carli he'll be so excited if his boy wins this uh, Gary Ben who was uh, the mechanic for Neil Hudson on the 500 Grand Prix trail in for, with uh, factory Yamahas in 82 and 83 Gary looking after Daniel Reard and Brett, Mark of, Brett Metcalf and Shane Boyd, who we haven't really seen anything of. I don't know where Shane Boyd is in this race. And the, and the answer is, well, Brett Mark, Metcalf it is who's down in 31st place. And Shane Boyd in 24th, just ahead of Eve DeMaria. So the open class boys really being hammered by the MX2 guys. Tommy Stoll is uh, trying to close the gap. And he's closing the gap on Jussi Bevelainen in ninth place. As we watch Antonio Caroli knifing his way through the back markers. And he must feel like he's racing a home track. The British uh, audience is so enjoying the fact that we're, uh, we are at least seeing a European race winner here. And in the traffic, look, once again, Ivan Tedesco getting himself in a complete mess. Legs flailing. And right behind him, though, now Ryan Villapoto has come through into third place. So it really matters not for Tedesco as number 51, Blair Morgan of Canada, moves over out of the way. Well. And in fact, it looked to me then as if Tedesco almost pulled over. He glanced over his shoulder, realised it was Villapoto behind him, and just let him, nodded him through. I think the idea might be that he thinks that Ryan can get to Cairoli. Number 50, Marco Du, both the Canadians right at the back. And here comes number nine, Kevin Stribos. I beg your pardon, Steve Ramon. A lot was expected of him. He won the Open Class race yesterday, but he got a, a poor start and hasn't really been able to make the ground that we expected. But he's through to fifth place. He's lapping in about 2 minutes 11.5. Tedesco's the man who had the slow lap with a 2 minute 13.3 on his last circuit. <laughs> Villapoto, the, the man on the move. Pass number 23, Louis Goncalves. Have already getting lapped, of course. The Portuguese uh, lad who's had some really good rides in the MX2 World Championship. But what about this guy? He's even got the uh, sandy fair hair, reddish hair and freckles of Ricky Carmichael and they're saying he could well be the second Carmichael coming up through the ranks on uh, Mitch Payton's Kawasaki team. There was number nine, Steve Ramon, closing the gap as hard as he could amongst the back markers on these bl blokes. This is Ben Townley. And Townley trying to get on terms, trying to pull another point back for New Zealand in his battle with Ivan Tedesco. Not able to man manage to put in any quicker lap times, really. Christian Beji has moved. Oh, and uh, 
Well, Cody Cooper's had a big moment. Cody Cooper's had a two minutes 40 lap time, and the New Zealander on the open class under has dropped back to 18. So for this man, Ben Townley, no support now in this race. Cody Cooper's dropped to 18th place behind Mark Ristori. So uh, he's got to do it on his own and uh, hope that Cody Cooper can produce something in the third race alongside Josh Coppins. But Cooper was always going to be the prospective weak link in the in, in the New Zealand setup. Italy now just one point behind. And number 51 pulled up at trackside is Blair Morgan. The Canadians, the Canadians are having a nightmare. Finland in seventh, Spain in eighth, Estonia ninth, Great Britain holding on to the top ten. But of course. They'll be able to dr hopefully drop that DNF. That uh, oof! How often has Tedesco had moments like that today? Look at that, Canada, 18th. Incidentally, Ireland were, didn't even contest the B final this morning because Gordon Crockard unable to ride, having suffered. Uh, he'd been knocked unconscious by that appalling accident when mid-pack he was steady over one of the huge jumps halfway around the first lap. But uh, he got landed and he got hit in the back of in the back and the head and uh, although the guy who hit him we don't even know who it was didn't come off uh, it was a very very painful high speed crash for gordon crockard so let's hope they wish crockstar all the best in his recovery from yet another uh, injury because he really has suffered in the past couple of years but look at this guy steve ramon roger de costa has really got no reason to look anxious although he is looking at a belgian on a suzuki and remember he was a belgian on a suzuki who won, won, won five world titles for the japanese yellow factory in the 1970s he's now looking at steve ramon closing down on ben townley and ivan tedesco but tedesco's holding on he's fighting hard Tedesco, of course, was uh, at the Sheffield Arena Supercross a couple of years ago. He won't be there this year, I doubt, but you can go and see the legend that is Jeremy McGrath making his final, final farewell appearance at the 10th annual Sheffield Supercross on October the 28th. Where else but Sheffield? And he'll be up against David Villema, a Frenchman who, uh, who chased him all the way through the 2000 World uh, the AMA Supercross Championship. There's Tedesco 3, number 11, Townley, number 9, Steve Ramon. Ramon, we know that uh, a lack of aggression lets him down sometimes on the Grand Prix scene. Can a former 125cc world champion, in fact, the guy who was world champion before this man, Ben Townley, both of them riding for KTM during their championship years, can he make a pass stick? He's got less than two laps to go to, go, to do it. Townley working hard in mid-air, getting terrific airtime on Mitch Payton's Kawasaki squad and he, to the cheers of the crowd. Townley, who's immensely popular in the UK, having ridden some of the uh, British International Masters Championship Series about two or three years ago and being close mates with the uh, ex-British Open champion. Oh, and down has gone Kevin Strybos and Suzuki and Belgium in trouble. Kevin Strybos has wrapped himself up in the trackside Hessian, and he's down and looks almost like out. So bad news for the Belgians as one man takes a, a better position in the race. That is number nine, Steve Ramon. Down has gone number eight, Kevin Strybos. Oh, dear me. I tell you what, these 250Fs, they bite back. We're on the last lap. It's frantic. It's dramatic. There's back markers all over the shop. Out of the way, number 41, Manuel Chitaro of Germany. Oh, look at that. A mistake there by Steve Ramon. I see cuts just a little bit too tight. He doesn't like that drop there. That's where he uh, unloaded big style when he was leading the British Grand Prix. I think Townley just might have this in the bag at the moment. Cairoli leads, incidentally, at the moment by six seconds from Ryan Villipoto. It's Steve Ramon who desperately needs the points for Belgium. Number 112, Josef Kolavi of Slovakia. We catch up with the leader. What a ride by Antonio Cairoli, especially having been decked and starting absolutely from the back and coming through to 10th place in his first race. What a terrific, outstanding second race performance by the 20-year-old from Messina in Italy.
So repeating that wonderful performance at Vimmerby in Sweden. Oh, and he gives us the G. The Jamie McGrath knack knack. Come on, son, smile. He's done it for you. He's relaxed, he's enjoying himself. He said how much he enjoyed that terrific second race with Christophe Procell at Erne last weekend. The climax to the World MX2 Championship. Just look where you're going, son. You've got all the time in the world. Well, six seconds of it. Even a KTM jacket there was indicating that he'd got plenty of time to play with. So Cairoli takes victory and the chequered flag. A stupendous ride by the Italian. He wins it for Italy and for Claudio Di Carli on the left-hand side, who then kisses everybody in sight. That was excellent performance. But as far as the team's concerned, as we watch the thrilled Italians swarm around him, Brian Villipoto will take second place for the States. Townley gets third, Rabon gets fourth place, fifth, Tyler Rattray and Ivan Tedesco, a messy last lap, pushes the New Mexican down to sixth place, which at least is uh, some compensation for the Europeans after it looked like the they might even, the States might even go 1-2 in race two. So after 16 laps, Tyler Rattray gets that sixth place, seventh for Christoph Porcel, eighth place for Jussi Vevelainen, ninth place for Tommy Searle ahead of Carlos Campano because of Kevin Strybos dropping way downfield, of course. Ben Townley there congratulates Antonio Cairoli. Two tremendous rides. Townley, how has he got back to that level of fitness so soon? Oh, and Andrea Bartolini, the 1999 World 500 Champion with Yamaha and the team manager for Italy is a, a thrilled Andrea Bartolini, the Bartman welcomes Antonio Cairoli. <laughs> Terrific. So Tony Cairoli takes a great, great victory ahead of uh, Ryan Villipoto of the, U the United States of America and Ben Townley, Benjamin Townley of New Zealand. Steve Ramon for Belgium is fourth. That was a good late charge by Ramon. He nipped in past. He got two places in the last lap. Tyler Rattray also got through to fifth ahead of Tedesco. And for Great Britain, ninth for Tommy Searle, 12th for Carl Nunn. That will make Tommy Searle feel a bit better after a bit battered after that first race. Look at that. The, uh, the VIP suite here at Matterley Basin. What a great sight. New Holland, you can forget about them. They weren't even in the main race. But what a show here by Cairoli and, of course, by the Americans. Caroli, Villaporto, Townley, Ramon, fourth, Rattray, fifth, Tedesco, Christoph Porcelli, he'd be so disappointed with that. Yusuf Evelainen, a great ride by Yusuf, he's been out injured for most of the year. Tommy Searle, what a fine comeback in ninth, past Carlos Campano. Wyatt Avis pushed through past Col Carl Nunn, both of them on 450 KTMs. But uh, Christian Beji dropped to 16th for Italy and Cody Cooper to 17th for New Zealand. And uh, 19th for Yves de Marier, who really psh, must improve. Uh, that shows how far back the, the MX3 Grand Prix guys are in the overall scheme of things. And Jus Lansu, AMA the, um, in America, the AMA Rookie of the Year, 14th overall in the MA Championships Outdoor Nationals in 2005, ends up back down in about 27th place. Interesting. Uh, that means that the Americans, of course, will be uh, in pretty good state. Uh, despite the fact that Tedesco but push pack for six to add it to two makes eight. Eight and five equals 13. So 13 points for the USA. That wasn't bad, was it? That bit of uh, that attempt. Uh, th 11 plus three is 14 until you add 17 to take it up to 31 for New Zealand. And Belgium, of course, they've got a DNF. So there we have it. Italy on 34. South Africa, 43. France, 45. Belgium, 49. 58 for Finland. But, of course, remember, Belgium have a DNF to take into account. So too to GB on 74. So it could be that uh, both Belgium and Great Britain will uh, drop a stack through having better results in race three. For Great Britain, of course, Billy McKenzie will be back to join Carl Nunn. And uh, I'm looking for Kevin Strybos. He finished in 33rd place, a somewhat chased and Strybos, but it's America ruling the roost right now after two races.
So Belgium's 49 includes that uh, 33, that is uh, a rather disastrous ride there for Kevin Stribos. This is a quick look at a thankfully safe first turn, which Ivan Tedesco just launched his way through in classic style. And look at that, it's great to see the colours of all the different nations out at one go. And Tedesco, despite some rather ragged moments at the front, led the way for quite a while as Ryan Villapoto was in amongst an amazing train of MX2 stars, including the newly crowned world champion Christophe Porcel. But it was Porcel who made the mistake. Ooh, and it was a big one. He did well to recover as fast as he did from that. Incidentally, it was his... His brother, who had the problems yesterday, Sebastian Porcel, uh, suffered a broken wheel when he was lying second in the open class. And uh, that pushed him back down to eighth place for France. This is the determined Antonio Cairoli making his pass stick on Ben Townley and then flicking <laughs> a cheeky back wheel at him. And that was what happened to Ryan Villapoto when he'd made it through to second place. A big moment for the young AMA champion in the MX2 lights class and then a big bobble for <laughs> number three Ivan Tedesco allows Cairoli through into the lead and eventually Cairo, uh, it was Tedesco who kind of looked over his shoulder and allowed Ryan Villapoto through in case Villapoto had some chance of making it through to the front but it was Ben Townley also got the better of the new Mexican Victory went, what a beautiful still that is. Antonio Caroli pancakes his way across the finishing line to celebrate victory for the MX2 class. In fact, MX2s 1, 2 and 3 in this. And the first big bike man home, the open classer, was the 450 Suzuki, a factory Suzuki at that, of Steve Ramon's. Look at those flags flying. Isn't that just a great sight? This is the motocross of nations, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never Antonio, seen one before, birthday, check it out. This is Caroli. Yes, it's a very good race for me. I I trained a lot this week for uh, for keep uh, the speed because I know that uh, Villobot and Taule it's very fast at the beginning, and uh, this week I try to in the training I make so many fast laps and uh, I just training for for keep fast and uh, yeah, the, the first hit it's not so good because I crash in the start after two corner and uh, I take the gap and I finish 10 but uh, for sure when I start I'm third in the start I can finish in top five in the first hit but it's okay the second hit it's uh, enough for me uh, very good uh, result and uh, I'm very happy for uh, for the season and I say thank you for the team uh, Yamaha because the bike uh, today it's very very good and uh, also my, my feeling with the bike it's very very good and uh, I win thanks bye I forgot to tell you, he turned 21 yesterday. So, a belated birthday present for Antonio Cairoli, and how well-deserved was that? How aggressive and spry was that ride? And he really was as determined and aggressive as you've ever seen him. So Cairoli takes the second race victory, even if the USA are still well Ryan, up there at the front. This is Billy Porto. compared to the first one. Unfortunately, there's not a third motor. Yeah, you know... Uh... It was going good, you know, I, my teammate was right in front of me and we were just riding and uh, right behind him I went off the tabletop in the middle and jumped a little bit off the track and then jumped, hit a hay bale and almost crashed. So, uh, you know, a couple of guys got past me that I had already passed and, uh, you know, it scared me a little bit. So I had to, like, regroup a little bit and catch back up and, uh, you know, Caroli rode good. He was going fast and, uh, you know, just wish I could have won it. But, uh, you know, I think it, it did me good to, you know, get second and, uh, you know, I just hope uh, this next race our team can pull through. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to thank all the fans and, you know, all the people that came from U.S. And, uh, and especially everybody here that came. You know, thank you. Brian Villapoto, he's a good lad, isn't he? He's uh, complimenting Antonio Cairoli on his victory. A lad who won the NMA 85cc Open in 2002, 12 wins as an amateur in 2003, two Kawasaki Race of Champions, four Winter Olympics SX races, and uh, four Winter Olympics MX races in 2004, won three races at Lake Whitney Spring ben, National. It's nice to great see you guy. Back in Europe already fighting like that with Caroli. Did you enjoy that fight? Yeah, it was great. It's great. It was uh, something that's long overdue for sure. I first got to say hi to mum and dad and everyone at home. Yeah. It's, uh, there'll be a lot of people right now listening in and uh, i got to say hi to them and they're, they're supporting us from the other side of the world right now so I hope you guys are having a good evening and uh, 
Well, we just got to wait for Josh and Cody now, see if we can get up on the podium. It's it's uh, it's cool to be back in Europe, and everyone here has supported me a lot. You know, since I've been back, just got to say thanks to Kawasaki Pro Circuit, Monster Energy for uh, all their help to get here, and uh, hopefully we can uh, be up on the box later on. Ben Townley, 2004 World MX2 champion. He went back home to New Zealand and actually saw his folks for the first time in a fair while during his injury recuperation this year. And I think he really enjoyed being back there. So uh, Ben Townley and also enjoying being back in Europe. We've missed him. Good to see him back. Ben Townley, of course, will be campaigning that uh, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki in the AMA Supercross and National Championship Motocross Championship next season. But right now, he wants to be back on that rostrum for New Zealand. And that's going to be a close one. It is going to be a close one. <laughs> Can New Zealand pull it off? They're on 31 points. Italy are on 34. And that means that uh, we've also got in the frame Belgium, whose score soared to, 30, to uh, 49. But of course, they uh, suffered a shed full of points lost when... Kevin Stribos went down. And what about Tommy Searle? Great ride to ninth place for the kid who just missed out on his first British MX2 championship a week ago by three points, two weeks ago by three points at Hawkston Park. Last year, of course, he was uh, absolutely dominant in the British Under-21 championship. He lost the first round to Suzuki's Lewis Gregory, and then he won every one of the rest of them, seven out of eight. So we already knew he was something special. But right now, the USA, in the overall terms, these are the individual results, but the USA right now are leading. And look at that with Kevin Stribos put down as retired on lap 14. Oh, dear me. So a uh, poor, poor result from Belgium from the point of view of, uh, of the Suzuki squad. Great to see the Swedish flags flying. So 13, 31, 34 for Italy, 43 for South Africa, 45 for France. 49 Belgium, 58 Finland, 67 Spain. Estonia on 68. Great Britain, 74. And the rest, Australia, Germany. I think we can safely say Australia, Germany, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, Japan and Portugal are out of it, as also are Slovakia. Uh, the gallant Swedes, who, you know, it doesn't seem that long. In 1990 at Vimmerby on home territory, inspired by Hakan Karlquist as team manager, they were on the rostrum. It, it's amazing how it doesn't necessarily need the fastest guys with the uh, biggest reputations when you're racing these team events. It's astonishing how a team can pop up out of the woodwork, uh, inspired really on the day by either a great team manager or some terrific team spirit. In fact, that's what produced that victory in 1994 at Roggenberg in Switzerland for Paul Malin, Kurt Nickel and Rob Herring. Herring, of course, the team manager here for Great Britain in 2006. This, the 60th anniversary Motocross of Nations, first kicked off in the Netherlands in 1947. Great Britain won seven out of the first ten. Their greatest rivals back then, though, weren't actually Belgium. They were indeed the, the Swedes. The Swedes were really strong during the early years. But the man who's won the greatest number of individual titles is actually our very own Jeff Smith, the 500cc world champion of 1964 and 65. He was uh, seven times a, a motocross des nations winner with Great Britain. France have only won the once, Italy have won a couple of times, Sweden have won seven, the USA and Great Britain right now 16 apiece and it looks like US, the USA are going to move on to 17 and become the clear leaders in the history of this championship series. taking our leave from you in a few moments from all these wonderful fans here at Matterley Basin and we'll be back with race three live at the top of the hour whatever you, you do don't miss it join me Jack Burnicle four o'clock British summer time we'll be back at the Basin third race I'll tell you why it's crucial because five scores out of six actually count per team USA at the moment there is James Bubba Stewart the USA at the moment are on 13 points. 
New Zealand, OK, they're second on 31, but look how many Estonian flags there are flying out there. Isn't that amazing? The New Zealand are second on 31, but if you take away Cody Cooper's 17 points, that puts them on 14. If you take away Italy's 16 points for Christian Beji, that puts them on 18. If you take away France's 19 points for Yves de Maurier, that puts them on 26. If you take away Belgium's 33 after Kevin Strybos fell while Lisman did such great work in the closing stages to snatch fourth place, that puts the Belgians on 16. But of those teams, I would suggest that the guys who've got two really front runners out in the final race are the USA and Belgium. That man, Josh Coppins, we just glimpsed. The Lizard hasn't really got speed on his side in terms of his teammate, Cody Cooper. Cody Cooper, who's uh, the reigning New Zealand champion, not quite having the international pace to live with these guys. So Stuart Tedesco, good team. Belgium, Ramon and Everts. Ramon needs the start. France, Porcel De Mario. De Mario, the weak link. New Zealand, Coppins Cooper. Cooper, the weak link. South Africans have Neville Bradshaw out alongside Wyatt Avis. Narita and Atsuta for Japan. They're fighting for the, the Japanese championship. They're only two points apart right now. But really, it's all down to the Americans to lose this. If they make a mess of race three, then we could end up with someone other than the United States of America winning the 60th annual Motocross of Nations. It's not likely. Nearest to camera, number 37, David Philippatz, who is on the 450cc Open Class KTM, but of course he will be moving on to the Open Class with KTM. So this is a dry run for him and 2007, with of course his new team boss, none other than Stefan Everts. Look at little Bubba Stewart beside him, dwarfed by the tall I Belgian Italian. This is going to be a crucial start. This is such a critical start. Whoever comes out in the first two or three in the first turn could really stop their authority on this race and indeed on this team championship. Oh, Bubba Stewart gets blocked off the start. Stewart gets rammed back by the broad shoulders of David Philippard and he tucks in up the inside just behind Steve Ramon on the 450 Suzuki. So what an intriguing start that was and I thought that Philippard might have got it. And Philip Hatch did. He got a blazing start. Ramon's in there ahead of Stefan Everts. That's what the Belgians needed, a good start. Oh, it's a traffic jam. It's a traffic jam. Number 12 in the rook there was Cody Cooper. He got a decent start, but was getting blocked a bit. And what about number 13, Billy McKenzie? Billy Mack, the six-foot, two-inch Scotsman from Long Nidri, just outside Edinburgh. Third in the British MX2 Championship, destined to race for Dekrut Kawasaki in the MX1 World Championships in 2007, has catapulted out of the gate on the bike at Dixon 450 Yamaha. He's there in second place behind David Philippard. So two of the MX2 stars moving on to 450s. Two tall men, more suited perhaps to the bigger bikes, are there at the front. And behind them, look at that, number 10, Josh Coppins gets the start that he needs on the Cass Honda for New Zealand. Oh, Philip Hart's in a mess. Mackenzie tries to get alongside and take advantage. The crowd are going nuts. It's the first time we've had a Brit near the front all day. David Philip Hart's moves across and blocks Mackenzie. Oh, Billy's so desperate to get through. Wow, and the two Belgians are there. The two Belgians are right there as Mackenzie runs just a little wide into the first turn, what becomes the, uh, the first turn as they head out in their first full lap. Stefan Everts has moved past Steve Ramon. So Everts, Yamaha, the head of Ramon, Suzuki, both of them riding for Belgium. They need good results. Kevin Strybos let them down big style in the second race. Josh Coppins, New Zealand need the results. Can Cody Cooper hang in and give them a well-deserved rostrum finish? And one of the Kawasaki's, I think possibly one of the Americans, is trying to nose, and that, that would be James Stewart trying to nose in front as Billy Mack takes the lead. Mackenzie is at the front, riding lucky 13. Billy McKenzie has taken the lead. Can he hang on to it? What a great start for his Open MX1 career. Mackenzie gets the power down. Philip Arts gets the power down. Philip Arts is a fighter, though. He comes back at Mackenzie. The 21-year-old David Philip Arts, the 22-year-old Billy Mack. Tedesco is back in ninth place. 
Mackenzie having a rip snorting battle. Remember, this has got to go 30 minutes plus two laps. And we're at the tracks at its roughest. It's had th three tough races on it, including the B final at 11 o'clock this morning. Stefan Everts is trying to nose back his way past Josh Coppins, the man who did for him at Desert Martin in Northern Ireland and prevented him scoring his 100th Grand Prix victory there. Didn't matter, he did it a week later in Lerop. Oh, elbow to elbow with the man who will be taking over his Yamaha ride next year. And the Stars and Stripes are out in support of James Stewart and Ivan Tedesco. Stewart's there in fifth place. Ramon says you have to be ahead of Ramon now. He's done the job. Sebastian Porcel, the 21-year-old older of the French brothers. Oh, Mackenzie makes a big mistake. Completely loses drive and loses two places as he turns just a little too tight and gets out of shape in the left-hander. But he comes straight back to try and make a move under Stefan Everts. Can't quite make it stick. James Stewart is there in fifth place. What a fantastic shindig this is here at Matterley Basin. Motocross of Nations. Spectacular world team action. Oh, Josh Coppins trying to go right round the outside of Philip Arts, and Philip Arts squeezes the door shut on him. No, he doesn't. Ah, oh, Philip Arts riding with the sort of a dash and enthusiasm that's going to make him surely a presence in MX1 next year. Stefan Everts and James Bubba Stewart are now ahead of Billy McKenzie. Number one, Stewart. Oh, what a race. Already what a race. KTM versus Honda at the front. The Italian, David Philippat, on KTM, ahead of Josh Coppins. Both of them so dependent on what their colleagues are doing further downfield. I then take my eyes off them to find out. Cody Cooper's in 20th place for New Zealand. It's way short of good enough. Ramon's in sixth, backing up Everts in third. And uh, the other Italian, can't even see him in the top 20. Christian Beji, star of the MX2. He's in 32nd place. So uh, the Italians and the New Zealand suffering right now with uh, people way downfield. It's not going to help these guys at the pointed end. Stefan Everts finding himself once again, hammer and tongs with his uh, great rival, the 29-year-old Kiwi. Josh Coppins. Philip Hurts, Coppins, Everts, the battle for the lead. And it's four-way now because James Stewart's in there. They've just slightly gapped McKenzie and then they're followed by Sebastian Porcel, number four, who was in storming form on the 450 Kawasaki. Another man, of course, who's changing from MX2 to MX1 next year. I think mx one's going to be a brilliant competition in 2007. Partly because that man goes, but partly because there's some strong fast men coming up from MX2 to challenge that man number 10, Josh Coppins. Tedesco's 8th, Barragan 9th, Tunnel Leoc 10th, Carl Nunn 11th as the second British rider ahead of Yoshi Atsuta and Wyatt Avis. Fastest man on track on the last lap was James Stewart with a 2 minutes 9.225 second lap as once again Coppins tries to line up Philip Hatz. Collins, of course, made his return halfway through the season from that serious shoulder dislocation he suffered. Oh, he's gone down! Coppins goes down. He made his return and got on the rostrum, but he's gone down, and that's a crucial moment for New Zealand as Coppins lost the front wheel and drove himself into the ground. So the, the man who lost his British Open Championship two weeks ago to Ken Dedeiker, his teammate at CAS Honda, drops the 450 Honda. Stefan Evans glances over his shoulder and what he'll find is that behind him is uh, the exuberant figure of James Stewart. Oh, dear me, this is fascinating. <laughs> so Stewart's in there, Billy McKenzie's in there, Sebastian Porcel, Steve Ramon. What a great sight here, Matterley Basin. This is a huge area, so that to have this density of crowd around such an enormous space just gives you some idea of the 40,000-plus fans who've turned out from all over. They've arrived from all over Europe and beyond. There's a good contingent of American supporters as well, and uh, it looks like possibly even with having, without having a race win that they could be the guys who take the overall victory. 16 to the USA, 23 to Belgium now. 
56 to South Africa. But of course, there are scores to be dropped. That's the crucial fact. Number four, Sebastian Porcel, ahead of number nine, Steve Ramon. Ramon is uh, not really holding up his end for Belgium as uh, Everts, the close to 34-year-old, battles for the lead and knows that James Bubba Stewart, the stocky Floridian, is not far behind on that Kawasaki. Number 37. So I say, oh, look at that. Stefan Everts leaned on by James Stewart. He tried to lean back on Bubba, but it didn't work. Bubba just had the edge on him, and he pushed underneath. Now, Everts, of course, he's not used to... Wow, he just retaliates. No, he doesn't. Bubba manages to get the drive back. But Everts isn't used to that sort of aggression. The youngsters have been a bit overawed by him this year in MX1. He's not used to people cutting underneath him like that and just attempting to take his foot pegs from under his feet. <laughs> so Bubba Stewart, he's looking to at least get an American on the top deck of an individual race here as Everts goes for the inside line and drops into it. But Bubba Stewart is so aggressive and he finds the inside rut again into the next turn. And this is Everts being shown what it's like to get some really attacking, forceful aggression thrown at him. Bubba Stewart, whose assault on the American National Championship was crucified, really, by a couple of massive crashes, which he thankfully survived in one piece. But he's proving just how fast he can be on the big four-stroke Kawasaki. Now, David Philippard, who, of course, is a relative novice. The tall, angular, handsome Italian riding the Red Bull champ KTM, but Bubba's looking for some way in. Bubba Stewart, who you'll notice is smaller than you think of him. You're dead. You don't tend to think of him as being a small guy, but he's a little fella. He looks quite dwarfed by that Kawasaki, but it's Stefan Everts who's feeling the, the sting of the Kawasaki's roost right now on that Yamaha. Josh Coppins is down in 14th place behind Mark Ristori, so suddenly New Zealand's chances have absolutely collapsed. Oh, what a shame. They looked in really good shape for getting themselves on the rostrum. Not any longer. Philip Arts leads it for Italy. Stewart second for the USA. Everts third for Belgium. Porcel fourth for France. Ramon fifth for Belgium. A Tedesco sixth for the USA. That's a vital ride. If he ends up with two sixth places, they only have to drop six points, then uh, that's going to mean that they've cakewalked the event and gone into a clear lead with 17 victories. Remember, they only won their first one in 1981, which was like 34 years into the history of the event. But then they won 13 on the trot. They won again in 1996, in 2000 and in 2005. They are the defending champions. Roger de Costa. The man, of course, was a Belgian legend before he went off, and already an American legend before he landed on American shores at the end of 1980 to become boss of Honda America's racing activities. Oh, look at how close and fast these two guys swapping back. Oh, Everts, where did he pull that from? Feet pinned, he goes on the outside of James Stewart. Wow! Oh, what a pass. Stewart, though, instantly responds. Look how aggressive the American is, always looking for that inside rut. And if he can't get the inside rut, he'll make his own. He's back in front. And David Philippart is somehow holding on ahead of these guys. The last lap, two in it, 8.9, 2, 8.8, 2, 9.0. That's how close it is amongst these three. But Philip Arts must be wary because right now, if James Bubba Stewart just gets claws his way away from Stefan Everts and can focus on challenging Philip Arts, then that will be spelled danger for the KTM rider. Steve Ramon just behind them. He set the fastest lap of the race on the last lap with a two minutes 8.0. His fastest lap of the race. Everts once again surges round the outside of James Bubba Stewart. What fabulous racing. This is what we wanted to see. Europe versus the USA. And what tantalisingly different styles. The new and most feared whiz kid on the block in the USA, James Stewart, against the man who has become an absolute world and Grand Prix legend, Stefan Everts.
and Everts is now setting his sights on David Philippard. He knows that the route to safety surely is to get himself to the front. Oh, Stefan comes up just uh, a little short on the on the long table top then, because with having uh, Philippard just in front of him also running up a bit short, you've got to be a bit careful and canny. <laughs> oh, look at this! And Steve Ramon crosses the line. He has closed right on this trio with his fastest lap, but of course, has he got that aggression? Can he learn from Bubba Stewart ahead of him and think, oh, right, that's the way to attack people and get past them. Must give it a try. Here comes uh, Stefan Evans. He launches his way past number 37, David Philippartz. Now, Philippartz pushed to second place. Belgium, one point for the win, four points for fourth right now. Philippartz comes back. But the leader getting saluted by this crowd, this international crowd, Stefan Everts. Oh, there's a lapper already just about pulling up, anchoring up and getting well out of the way. Number 43, Julian Bill on the bike at Dixon Yamaha, Swiss champion having a, a poor day for the promoter Steve Dixon. And here comes Bubba Stewart. He's regrouped, he's launched his way past. Fastest man on the track on that lap was uh, Jonathan Barrigan in sixth place now for Spain. Oh, Josh Coppin has moved back to 12th. Nunny's in 10th place. Billy McKenzie has dropped to 9th behind Ivan Tedesco because Barrigan and Tanel Leoc of Estonia have launched themselves through to 6th and 7th place behind Sebastian Porcel. They're all in the picture there. There's Ramon. There's Sebastian Porcel. Porcel is going fast. 2 minutes 8.9 against Barrigan on 2 minutes 8.7 behind him. Barron, of course, Barrigan, of course, will be teammates with number 37. David Philippertz in the MX1 KTM factory team under the watchful eye of Stefan Everts in 2007. Well, what the heck's happening on the... As far as scores are concerned, it's got everything at the moment. has just got to favour the Americans because they haven't got a duff score. The score that they're able to drop right now is Ivan Tedesco, the New Mexico rider in... Eighth place right now. That's as many as they have to drop, whereas everybody else has got a fairly colossal downfield score to get shot of. And the so-called MX3 world champion, Yves de Marier, has just moved up to 25th place. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think he's going to do the French and that man number four, Sebastian Porcel, a lot of good. They're going to have to count one of his scores, which at the moment is about 19th. No, but Sebastian no, no, no. Porcel, no, no, no. how good is Porcel looking? He's looking forward to being a, a member of the MX1 assault squad in 2007. It's going to be a cracking series. Barragan, Tunnel Leoc, Tedesco, Mackenzie and Nunn have all set their fastest lap times on that but last lap. <laughs> Amazing. So Carl Nunn trying to claw his way past Billy Mackenzie as number nine. And that's Steve Ramon, tries to find his way back into the top three. He's attacking David Philippats. Got to attack him harder. But also he's being pushed by Porcel. Sebastian Porcel was so furious at being dropped from the French team in favour of Mikael, the semi-retired Mikael Pichon that he rode in his MX Donations gear at the final round of the World Championships just a, year, just a week ago to show his disapproval. But of course Pichon washed out off the start, somewhat over-enthusiastic, uh, face-planted himself, bust his nose, put himself out of this event. So Sebastian was um, coyly invited back in by team manager Olivier Robert. Well, it's probably a good idea that he did invite him back in because look at the way the guy's riding. France, of course, runners-up last year. David Villemang, Sebastian Tortelli and Mikael Pichon at Erne. But Porcel it is now who's applying pressure to these two. Everts has a lead of about 1.2 seconds and he's just set his best lap time of 2 minutes 8.76 seconds. Oh, oh, a huge moment for the 2003 125 world champ, Steve Bomber Ramon. Oh, we nearly bombed himself out of the race at that moment. Wow. <laughs> oh, and uh, I don't think that's James Stewart, thankfully, on a Kawasaki, frantically trying to kickstart the green machine. That was James Stewart who just flew through the picture. Ramon, always tidy at getting high up the adverse cambers, but takes a very, very wide line here. He's looking to uh, 
eject himself fast out of the right hand there, but he's left himself too big a gap to attack Philip Parts there. Eight laps complete, a 1.9 second lead for Stefan Everts in the battle, the Euro-American battle at the front. Leoc ahead of Tedesco, McKenzie in ninth, Coppins has moved through to tenth now at the expense of Carl Nunn. Yoshia Tsuda having a good ride, enjoying himself back on European soil. The former Japanese champion rode for Harry Edge with CAS Honda team for a couple of years, 28 years old now. Had a terrible, uh, made a, a terrible start to his Grand Prix career when he both, he broke his thigh at Valkensvard at the opening uh, Grand Prix of his career. But he came back to finish top ten in the world. But Yoshi now back riding those, riding that Japanese championship at the age of 28 now, leading the MX1 Japanese championship from Nar Akira Narita with two races to go. He also raced, of course, for Motivision Suzuki. Look at this. The unmistakable style of Stefan Everts. Can he hang it together? Joel Robert, the man who inspired the kid, as well, of course, as his dad, who won four world titles himself, Harry Everts. Joel Robert, a former winner with Belgium, of course, of the motocross of nations. Now the Belgian team manager. In 1969 at Farley Castle in Great Britain, the Belgians were with the winners, and uh, Joel Robert and Roger de Costa, now opposing captains of teams here, were of course members of that great Belgian team alongside uh, Chewison and Sylvain Gabors, who's now the Suzuki Grand Prix. Uh, road race, uh, motocross racing boss. Talking about road racing, is it? Look at this. He's getting excited, isn't he? Old dear Joel knows that. James Stewart's coming again. Uh, excited people trackside, some of the, the best road racers uh, in the United Kingdom. The recently crowned British Super Sport champion, Cal Crutchlow, and his mate Craig Jones, a world superbike rider, alongside the uh, veteran world superbike star and recent race winner, Chris Walker. Stalker, who loves his motocross, has dragged the two youngsters along with him to enjoy this weekend. John McGuinness. Uh, multi, multiple TT winner, holder of the lap record on the Isle of Man in the Tourist Trophy, winner of the senior TT earlier this year. McGinley's here because he loves his off-road as well. And so too is uh, Jonathan Ray, a leading okay. contender in the British Superbike Championship with the Red Bull Honda team. That he arrived, uh, got a flight in from Belfast very late on Friday night. It's great to okay. see because the, uh, the off-road guys... Uh, the situation oh, is pretty him. safe for USA. What is your suggestion to James right now to try to pass uh, Stefan or just uh, to keep the position yeah, like yeah, that? The main thing is uh, to finish uh, and not screw up, you know. Uh, if All we need is fifth place now to win overall. So it would be nice, you know, it's nice to see a good battle and it would be nice to beat Stefan, but that's secondary. The first thing is to, to win the nation. Yeah, you guys had a very good start in the first two motors, but in this one, not so good. Did you have any concern after that? No, I know that uh, James could come back, you know, He's, he passes good, and uh, so I was not too concerned. The main thing, uh, he was not on the ground in the first turn. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. Roger De Costa, he doesn't look 62, does he? Bless him, he won't like me for saying it. He won his first motocross de nation with Belgium here at, in the Great Britain at Farley Castle, Wiltshire in 1969, and then he won again at Norg in the Netherlands in 1972, and again the following year at Wallen in Switzerland, and then in 1976, St. Antonis in the Netherlands, 1977 at Cognac in France, and finally in 1979, the first motocross to nations that I ever went to at Ruskia Santa in Finland. He was a... a ra he was a in the winning team, which is a, the winning team was led by uh, two dashing third places for Harry Everts, Stefan Everts' dad, alongside Andre Malherb and Roger de Costa. So Roger de Costa winning six times with Belgium and of course countless times as the team manager of the USA. David Philippartz is there in third place still, fourth Steve Ramon. Not yet succeeded in getting past. In fact, 1.2 seconds astern of number 37, the tall Italian now. Jonathan Barrigan through to fifth place ahead of Sebastian Porcel. Barrigan piling up the calls. I think he might want to get past this guy who is uh, 
his KTM teammate in MX1 next year. Cody Cooper's improved to 14th place. A good ride for Cody Cooper for New Zealand. The 22-year-old from Opatiki. Finished runner-up to Josh Coppins in the 250 class in the New Zealand Championships. Won the National MX2 crown for the first time, beating Daryl King, the older of the two King brothers, uh, in 2003. Riding for Honda Australia, Cody Cooper won the MX2 class in Australia in 2004 and the New Zealand MX2 class in 2005. So he's not really a big bike man, so he's really riding a feisty race. He's into 14th place ahead of Jussi Bevelainen and Antti Pirinen, the two Finns tied together. In fact, Pirinen's just gone past Bevelainen as we watch the battle between the two KTMs. Look at this. Obviously, in, obviously inspired by the goings-on at the Ryder Cup World Team Golf Championships. This is Jonathan Barrigan on the right, attacking... David Philippats on the left. Oh, Barrigan taking a huge outside line, and I think it might have worked. Oh, clever boy. Both these guys say they've benefited hugely from the experience of five-time world champion Georges Jabay as advisor to the KTM Grand Prix squad in 2006. But, of course, George is disappearing now. So, too, the great Case van der Ven. 18 times a Grand Prix winner to be replaced by Stefan Everts. Well, I suppose if you're going to replace two guys of that calibre with somebody, then Stefan Everts, you're not going to get much finer than that. So they'll be benef benefiting from the 10-time world champion's advice next season. Meanwhile, here, Everts still has a lead of about 2.7 seconds. And he's still lapping just a little faster. Well, he certainly did on the last lap, two tenths of a second faster than uh, Jimmy Stewart. So James Stewart second, Philip Hatch third, Barragan fourth. Tedesco is still in eighth place ahead of Billy McKenzie by about six seconds. United States on 15 points, Belgium on 23, New Zealand and Italy at the moment tied on 38. Oof. And I presume that the best of the last race, the better last race score might count, which would put Italy to the forefront, with Philip Hertz presently in fourth place, Josh Coppins down in tenth between Mackenzie and Carl Nunn. James Stewart, it's all very well, uh, a man of the vast experience of Roger de Costa saying, well, really, it's the team that matters, but I've got a feeling that this fella the first African-American to win a major motorsports championship of any kind in the world would uh, sincerely like to be putting one over Stefan Everts. But perhaps he has just relaxed a bit, perhaps he's just knocked the pace back and this is actually James Stewart taking it steady. And he, has, he did, in fact, lap. As, uh, Stefan Everts has just set his fastest lap of the race. What is the man like? Mercurial. He's opened up the gap to 5.2 seconds. He lapped in 2 minutes 7.24 against James Stewart's 2 minutes 8.28. Jonathan Barrigan, 2 minutes 7.7, .7, is trying to close the gap now on James Stewart. 11 laps apiece gone, so we've got just under 4 minutes plus 2 laps of this increasingly rugged circuit at Matterley Basin. Number 52, Jan Zaremba of the Czech Republic, keeping out of the way there of number 37, David Filipas. Look how rotted this is getting. You wonder how these guys can travel this fast in energy-sapping, wheel-snatching ruts like these. Fantastic performance. Filipas back in front of Jonathan Barrigan. So Filipas is certainly proving to be uh, a strong performer in his first international ride on the 450cc factory KTM and I think that's crucial if he's back into third place and uh, Barrigan what's happened to Barrigan we might have lost him Sebastian Porcel goes through in fourth place for France Barrigan's there in fifth and Barrigan had a big moment on that lap he went his laptop his lap time dropped by about 14 seconds on that lap Tedesco still there in eighth. That eighth place actually doesn't matter. It can be dropped. Mackenzie ninth, that counts. Coppins tenth counts. Nunn eleventh counts. C Cody Cooper fourteenth counts. 
And in fact, what a good that gallant ride by Cooper means in, that really that unfortunate mistake early in this race when he was running at the front by Josh Coppins and the CS Honda will have dearly cost New Zealand. I think probably cost them their third ever Rostrum finish. Behind David Philippart, Sebastian Porcel should be next up. Oh, we've got a few guys playing games first. There is Porcel, and there right behind him is Steve Ramon, trying to find a way through on the Suzuki. France versus Belgium. Thirteen laps complete for Stefan Everts. And number 16, Tannel Leoc has emerged into the frame as well. And all those Estonian flags, the ones that I wasn't sure of the identity of, till it suddenly sunk into me, will be uh, waving even harder for the former international British Masters champion, Tannel Leoc, as Steve Ramon plunges through to snatch fourth place from Sebastian Porcel, number four. Number 16, Tannel Leoc wants to follow suit. Barrigan's now back behind these guys. Billy McKenzie's wakened up with his best lap of the race so far, even though it's getting rougher. And we're in amongst the back markers. They need to get out of the way quick. Blue flags are waving. Met the MX1 rider for Portugal. Paula Gonzalez, Goncalves rather, has just got lapped. Number nine, Steve Ramon wants to at least assure, uh, ensure that Belgium are on the rostrum. He's now in fourth place. Fifth, Tannel Leoc. Sixth, Sebastian Porcel. Then the battle of the backmarkers. Before Barrigan, Tedesco, Mackenzie and Josh Coppins round out the top ten. And Coppins, and the reason that... Uh, the reason that Billy McKenzie has responded is Josh Coppins is right behind him, but he put in a quicker lap then and pulled a couple of tenths back on the New Zealander. Tannel Leoc, well, he's had to come out of the pack in both his races, the Estonian Express. The 21-year-old Baker's son from the Baltic state. Riding for De Groot Kawasaki. He won't be Sebastian Porcel's teammate in 2007, but they'll have pretty identical weaponry in the MX1 class. And here they are, soaring together through this English air. Yves de Maria has reached 16th place. Oh, heady, eh? And uh, in the lead, Stefan Everts. Second place, James Stewart. Everts has just gone round even faster. Everts has just done 2 minutes 6.369 as Joel Rebeir watches the battle between Steve Ramon and Tanner Leoc. Leoc's coming through on the inside. He's more aggressive than Ramon. You'd always side with Tanner Leoc in a tussle like this. But, uh, oops, I was going to say, Ramon's going to show him a clean pair of Suzuki heels, but not quite. Mackenzie then clinging on ahead of Josh Coppins. And Stewart's also said his fastest lap of the race with a 2 minute 7.3, just a second slower than Stefan Everts at the moment, 6.1. He's uh, 5.4 seconds behind the leader. Leox now through. A popular figure, the curly head Estonian on British soil. Probably because he's so ragged, actually. We love watching him. Look at this, the cool, smooth, poised David Philippartz for Italy. Two laps to go. I think Philippartz might have done enough to bring a rostrum finish Italy's way. But they're, till, they're still tied with New Zealand. It needs, I think the difference would be if Coppins... Oh, Tedesco's gone 10th. Mackenzie comes through 8th. Coppins in 9th. Ivan Tedesco, he's done his job for the day and he's blown it now. He's back into 10th place. Sebastian Porcel behind Tanner Leoc, so too is Steve Ramon. But Mackenzie versus Coppins is absolutely crucial. There's one second between them. If Josh Coppins could grab that eighth place, he'd grab a rostrum finish for the New Zealanders. Well, 
Oh, how crucial is that? How cruel will it be if he doesn't make it? Everts has gone faster and faster. How's he done that? Two minutes, 6.3 seconds. His best lap time in lap 14. He's now completed 14 laps. He's on to his last lap. And the crowd are cheering them as much as they've ever... They're cheering him on as much as they've ever cheered him before. Turns 34 on the 25th of November. The man from Brie, Dilson Stocken in Belgium, now resident, of course, and uh, very happy with his lady Kelly and his son Liam in Monte Carlo. And I tell you what, once this weekend is over, he'll be able to relax a bit. He'll be able to relax that astonishing regime and be able to just let go a little bit of that motivation until, of course, the Western Beach race on October the 22nd when he'll be right there, like the sand fly that he is, having a ball. And you'll have Tyler Rattray and Joel Smets to deal with as well. Belgian flags waving for Stefan Everts. He's not going to take home a Belgian trophy, but he is going to take home his second victory of the day. So a remarkable contest coming to a close now. And Billy McKenzie's job played. Coppins is through to eighth place. Ahead of Tedesco. McKenzie's had a two-minute 20-second penultimate lap. Something went wrong for the Scotsman on that lap. And I think that the lizard, Josh Coppins, might have recovered sufficiently to snatch a podium place for the Kiwis. Well, would you believe it? All the way over at the other side of the world, they could be headed for their third rostrum behind the USA and Belgium. Their third rostrum finish in... MX Day Nation history. Wonderful. Let's hope the maths are right. Stefan Everts wins the third race. Yet again, proves just how good he is. James Stewart in second place. Stefan waits for Bubba. And let's hope that these guys sporting and congratulating one another. What a pair of racers they are. James Bubba Stewart and Stefan Everts, a pair of legends. Across the finishing line, the winner, Stefan Everts. Third for David Philippartz. And fourth place, I think we'll go to Tunnel Leoc. He's just set his fastest lap of the race on the penultimate lap, Stefan Everts style. And uh, if, if Stefan's going to do a lap of honour, I do wish that Bubba Stewart would as well. What a race. And what about the MX2 guys who weren't in that final confrontation? Stefan Everts, well, he's never been the greatest loser in the world, but I tell you what, he's a terrific winner. Gets a hug from his wife, or partner, at, all, at least. So Stefan Everts comes home, uh, the winner from James Stewart, David Philippats. Steve Ramon makes fifth place for Belgium, ahead of Jonathan Barragan of Spain, Sebastian Porcel of France. And Josh Coppins of New Zealand, and I think that was a really crucial final lap by Coppins. I think it might have clawed that third place back for the Kiwis. Ben Towney will be bouncing if that's the case, only the third time that they will ever have done it. Congratulations to Martin Mainsbridge of Bike It and Steve Dixon of Dixon Yamaha for having uh, had the audacity and the nerve and even somehow the resources to put on an event like this. Oh, folks, you could take your litter home with you. Look at that. What a cleaning up operation we're going to have here over the next few days. But Matalie Basin may perhaps have established itself now as a Grand Prix venue after that fabulous uh, set two. Everts wins it from Stewart and Philippats. Leoc, and look at all the different, every single different nationality virtually uh, represented there. Billy McKenzie, unlucky, dropped to 10th place on uh, the penultimate lap just ahead of Carl Nunn. The two British boys finishing together. At Suter finishing ahead of uh, Cody, Co uh, Cody Cooper. Cody Cooper gets another place as well, and it could be, therefore, that uh, Cooper's done enough to really ensure that New Zealand have uh, got themselves on the rostrum. But I tell you what, these guys know that they're on the rostrum. <laughs> James Stewart on the left and on the right Ivan Tedesco and in between them Ryan Philip Porto and uh, being inserted between them is Tedesco's motorcycle
You did all that we needed to. We're good. You're good. Yep, it's the usual American con flap going on. Nice to see James Stewart smiling. He may have uh, been beaten in that last race, but as Roger DaCosta so appropriately pointed out, it's the race result that matters. The youth stream boss, Giovanni, uh, uh, Giuseppe Luongo, can't resist getting up on the rostrum there. But really, I think what the crowd want to see are the stars. And look at this. The new Mexican on the right-hand side. They're heavily tattooed. Ivan Tedesco decides that it's time to show off those tattoos. And while many, many thousands of people head for home, look what a magnificent sight. A lot of the crowd stay behind to check out the guys on the podium. As I, I figure that we've got the USA winning ahead of Belgium and New Zealand, but I wish uh, I, I'm looking forward to it being confirmed. And as for where the Brits finished, well, to be honest, I've got no idea. Yves de Maria finally got past Nev Bradshaw into 15th place. And Jos Lansu, Rookie of the Year in America last year, 24th for Estonia. Colton Fasciati, a disappointing ride for the uh, electrifying teenage Canadian who will doubtless be back at the Sheffield Supercross where he's won several times before to take on Jeremy McGrath and David Vilman on October the 28th. So finally, this European crowd, and look at the size of it, gets to see, well, uh, all, in all fairness to Ivan Tedesco, two American legends who they've only ever really been able to see in photographs and in videos and DVDs. Ryan Villapoto and James Bubba Stewart. <laughs> the winners of the Motocross of Nations 2000, and that ought to read 2006. Just a little mistake there, a little slip of the pen. And that means that they are now the leaders, 17 times, and that all since 1981. 1981 through 1993, 1996, 2000, and 2005, and finally again in 2006, the United States of America have won the World Team Motocross Championships. Belgium in second place. My goodness me, I was right about New Zealand. Fantastic ride by both Josh Coppins after his fall and Cody Cooper. Snatch it from Italy with France fifth and Great Britain, I thought, had sneaked into the top six, and they did. Well done, fellas. So sixth place, despite having that wretched DNF for Tommy Searle in the first race when he was flattened in the first turn. In fact, almost before he reached the first turn, means that Great Britain have salvaged sixth place here at Matterley Basin. And this was uh, a, that was a fantastic start. Did we have the camera in the right place to see David Philippart's motor up the inside of Josh Coppins and grab the whole shot when it looked for a moment as if the lizard had it all his own way. In fact, Coppins sucked back to about fourth place in the first couple of turns as Philippart and Billy McKenzie. Now, what would have happened if McKenzie could have got himself to the front? It would have been interesting to see because he worked hard too. Meanwhile, Coppins at it with his old adversary, Stefan Everts. But Josh eventually made a crucial mistake when he looked to have that second place. Stewart was coming through to challenge the front three when Josh went down as simply as that. It was such a simple, almost elementary error. It could have cost New Zealand dear, but typically the fanatically determined and uh, focused Josh Coppins forced back sufficiently far up the table. Look at Bubba Stewart to make it a good day for the New Zealanders. What a combination in riding styles we had between the cool, suave Stefan Everts and the emphatically aggressive James Bubba Stewart. And you can see that David Philippard, well, he's learned, he's really learned a lot already from Stefan Everts. So having Stefan to guide him next year is going to be a, a major bonus. This is Tanel Leok forcing his way through past Steve Ramon. But fortunately, this man had done it enough for Belgium because two points from two rides men, meant that the Belgians had it. The winner, Stefan Everts, going out in style for his international motocross career, but still with his Western Beats race career to conclude on October the 22nd. <laughs> we won't be carrying that on Eurosport, you'll have to go. It's extremely inexpensive to get in. 
And uh, Gary Ho Gareth Hockey and the boys will welcome you down there, believe me. We'll have a really great time, especially with Joel Smets and Tyler Rattray and last year's winner Paul Edmondson also in the fray. Josh Coppins, Cody Cooper and Ben Townley. BT said he desperately wanted to be on the rostrum. And boy, oh boy, he's made it there. And Shane King, the 1996 world champion, five world 500cc champion with uh, KTM, is also joining him on the rostrum. And Russell Burling, who I haven't seen since he was uh, looking after Craig Coleman in the 125 and 250 GPs back in uh, 1979, 80 and 81. Stephen Everts with his son Liam arrives on the rostrum with Kevin Strybos and Steve Ramon and there Steve manager the utterly legendary I'll just stub out this cigarette on your handlebars before I beat you Joel Robert I get the impression that Stephen doesn't even mind too much that the team championship went to the USA because he won two races you know what these guys are like they may not be team players they're winners From the USA, James Bubba Stewart, Ryan Villapoto, Ivan Tedesco. Tedesco, the second time he's won, having also been involved at Ernay 12 months ago. So he's already knocking up quite a fine record in the motocross de Nation. Two, two raced and two won. There's George Bay in the orange KTM shirt, just walking across the forefront there. Five-time world champion himself and, of course, a former winner of the Motocross des Nations with uh, Belgium. The first time, actually, at Farley Castle in 1980. Amazing. All the connections here. Yeah. And old man Zerbi, the uh, president of the FIM, comes on to congratulate a few people. Josh Coppins and Cody Cooper, they did a good job, didn't they? The Lizard, who will be, re who'll be racing, of course, for the Stefan Everts, the ex-Stefan Everts, Michaela Rinaldi team in 2007 and must be a bit of a pre-race favourite for the MX1 World Championship. But let's face it, we've seen some dynamic racing from the guys who will be challenging him. Now, I sincerely hope that isn't the Peter Chamberlain trophy because that should go to the winner. And it's uh, gone to Belgium, who are second. So I've got a feeling that the Peter Chamberlain trophy, yes, folks, it's a British trophy, will go to the Americans. America first really made a showing here at Husqvarna in Sweden in 1974. Jim Pomeroy, Brad Lackey, Marty Tripes and jo Jamming Jimmy Wynat finished in second place behind the Swedes but here is the illustrious Peter Chamberlain trophy that Roger da Costa first got his hands on at Farley Castle just up the road really in 1969 and here he is bless him as team manager of the USA handing it over to the Americans they've got it to take back home again <laughs> wonderful they had to use Wolfgang Zerb and Giuseppe Longo to present those trophies. They couldn't find a suitable um, ce ce celebrity. Should have asked me, fellas. I'd have done it for you. unable to ride good to see RC on the rostrum so the Stars and Stripes celebrate another victory a momentous victory the 17th the only nation to win this magnificent trophy 17 times now since its inception in 1947 well we Brits will just have to come back and win it next year won't we but incidentally it's it's in the United States for only the second time in its history next year. Joel Robert congratulates 
Ricky Carmichael. And look at that, what a lovely picture. Carmichael on the right, Everett on the left, 10 times champions of the world and America. And boy, had we been looking forward to those two impressive men going at one another today. But what a race we've had, regardless. And I thought Ricky not being able to ride might have weakened the American team. I've got a feeling I was wrong. Take your hat off, my boy. It'll fit. And the MX2 class winner, the rookie who came over here. We didn't know what to expect, but he brought it home. MX2 class winner. The MX2 class winner, individual class winner. And uh, the dear lady can't find him. It's Ryan Villaporto, of course, of the USA who has two number one plates. He'd be so, uh, clost he would be so clogged up with number one plates. But we keep getting told that that's Wolfgang Schur, but can, can we find out who this lady is? Brian Villaporto, he's... What's going to happen between him and James Bubba Stewart on the right of the top deck of the rostrum in coming years in America, eh? For Stefan Everts, he's got a whole new challenge ahead of him. Well, not just the Western Beach race, but... KTM team managership, the overall individual winner of MX1 at his final motocross of nations. Stefan Everts takes a bow. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, all of our winners there, the teams, the individuals. So Joel Robert, what a gentleman on the left-hand side. These two men, absolute legends, back home in Belgium, and uh, this isn't going to make them any less so. The Belgians finish second. And they are, it's their 50th ever podium finish at the Motocross des Nations. How good is that? The Belgians then, Stefan Everts celebrates the 50th Belgian podium out of 60 runnings of the Motocross of Nations. But America take the spoils. Well done, New Zealand in third place. And for me, Jack Bernicle, well, what an afternoon it's been here in the United Kingdom. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye-bye.